telling you about it. We'll just talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked, 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 wicked. In it to win. All right, Leadheads, welcome back to the Talking Lead Podcast. This is episode 242. Was it Deuce Cuatro? Du- How do you say 200? You speak Spanish at all, Mike? No, it stops at like DS. What okay. about what about Italian? You do any Italian? You, can you, can no, you- I don't do that either. It's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so joining me this week, Leadheads, is uh, none other than our good friend Mike Sodini with Eagle Imports, Eagle Versa, Grand Power, La Llama, Metro Arms. Uh, the list goes on and on. And, of course, Avidity. <laughs> Yep, there you go. So uh, we're going to be talking some Bursa, Grand Power, Metro Arms, all those companies you guys talked about from Eagle Imports coming at you guys uh, just in a few days at the 2018, is the 147th NRA annual meeting Yep. in, in Dallas, Tejas. So we're going to talk about that coming up. But if you guys didn't get an opportunity to listen to last week's episode, you are missing out. We hit you guys with some of the best deals uh, that we've that we've come across in a while. So Jeremy Smith with Smith and Bradley Watches joined us, and uh, they started a new brand called Defy, and they've got two watches in that line called the Scout and the Battlefield, and they are awesome. And I've been wearing mine. I've got my uh, Scout on today, so I'm showing Mike over the uh the interwebs here uh awesome watches you're gonna get as a lead head 44 percent off these watches if you use that code leadhead and that's unheard of they're, they're not offering that to anyone else anywhere except for you lead heads and you got to be listening to the show he refuses to let me advertise this so uh listeners who actually listen to the show will get this discount we also had Joe De Silva from Southpaw, and they were offering a great discount for you guys too, and they still are. It's twenty five percent off if you use that lead head discode from Southpaw. So if you're looking for some awesome accessories for your AR fifteen, uh, especially you left handers, uh, they've got those there. Uh, but they've got them for right handed and left handed users. So go to southpawtactical.com and take advantage of that discount uh, because that one is going to uh, probably not last more than uh, maybe a month, I think is what he said. So just uh, check them out and uh, definitely go to Defy Watches and uh, use that 44% discount code. And then they're doing those pre, they've got one that's called the Sands 13, Mike. Uh, yeah. They're coming out with a second edition of that. It's called the 2.0, and that's uh, from the Smith & Bradley line. Uh, but they it's normally a $400 watch for the lead heads. It's 175 bucks, if they, and they can pre-order it today. Nice. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking them up right now as we're talking. You're gonna want these, buddy. I'm telling you. <laughs> You're gonna want these uh, on your wrist. And we made the announcement that Defy Smith and Bradley watches is now the official wristwear of Talking Lead. So Jeremy is telling me that periodically he's gonna come on here and he's gonna hit you guys, you listeners and listeners only. So we're not advertising this on social media. So, you know, these, these wannabe lead head, lead head brigaders that don't listen to the show that just follow us and do the, the social media stuff aren't going to get these deals because they're not going to know about them, but only you guys will. And he's going to hit you with special deals periodically throughout the year. So you thought that was great getting a, a defy one of these scouts, one of these, um, battlefields. I think the battlefields are like 40 bucks. The, um, uh, the scout is like fifty bucks, uh, is what what that forty four percent discount comes down to. Uh, so stay tuned. There's more deals coming, but take advantage of these because they're not expired. So you guys can keep keep on uh, getting this deal, and you can buy as many of these as you want. So that brings me to our other sponsors, uh, the official optics of Talking Lead. Do you know who that is, Mike? The official optic of Talking Lead is uh, right on USA. R I T O N USA. They're based at Arizona. They are a veteran owned company, family owned business. Uh, Brady's been on the show several times and those guys are selling a ton of those, those optics. They're now into their Gen twos. They've had a big clearance on their Gen ones. I don't know if they still have any available, but they were doing blowout sales on those. So you guys can go to their website, see if they still have any of those Gen ones, but they're getting, they've got the Gen twos out now. And uh, that one to eight I've been talking about should be out any day. 
So go to rightonusa.com, check them out. Another big sale. I mean, that that's the benefit of being a leadhead, uh, Mike, is people get such great deals by being just leadheads, being led, part of the leadhead brigade. X still targets. Part of the time, man. You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, that's because these people, you know, they work with, they're like minded. They understand that you guys are hard workers and that you want value. You know, you want to get as much as you can and quality for your money. And uh, I only associate with quality companies. Mike knows that. Eagle Gosh. Imports, quality company, quality people. X Steel Targets, the same way. You guys go to xsteeltargets.com. And Bud is having a huge blowout sale right now with the AR500 Steel Targets. And I believe it is. I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up here. Um, but I think it's like thirty-five percent. If my Facebook would load, I just posted it. Come on, Facebook. Facebook yes, fits. Yeah. thirty thirty-five percent off everything. Use coupon code Spring eighteen. S P R I N G eighteen. And that's going to be a better deal than you guys get with the Leadhead discount code. So you want to take advantage of that while the supplies last. Go to XSteelTargets.com. And uh, Bud is, uh, I mentioned this a couple of episodes back, x Steel Targets, um, Talking Lead, Modern Spark Systems are all going to take part in the world record longest rifle shot coming up from Charlie Melton in Utah. And uh, Bud's made some some custom targets for those record-breaking break, uh, shots that Charlie's going to make. So stay tuned for info on that. Uh, other, I'm, I'm into our sponsor, xsteeltargets.com. Um, high Threat Concealment. You guys know High Threat. We've had uh, had those guys on the show several times. They were on the, the last uh, NRA show. They We didn't get them at SHOT Show. Um, I don't know if they were there. I can't remember if they were there or not. But High Threat Concealment, you know, those guys make the uh, awesome holsters, uh, mag holsters, the uh, concealed belt systems, highthreatconcealment.com. Uh, they, they even have come out with some stuff for your canine. They've got leashes and collars, uh, high quality. Uh, I think they're made from leather. Uh, they're supposed to be sending me some of those. I'm going to use them on Oshi. Oshi's going to get him a new necklace coming up soon. <laughs> He's a good boy. He deserves a new necklace. He's turning nine this year. Nine. Nine years. Great Dane. He's about 180 pounds. Just all big sweetie. He's a good boy. He's in there, <laughs> he's in there taking a nap. He'll probably come in here eventually. You've seen him. You know what he looks like. Big wide head. Modern Spartan Systems. Check them out at modernspartansystems.com. Don't just clean your firearms. Optimize them with Modern Spartan Systems lines of gun cleaning products, the lubricants, and they even have a product for your vehicle, Mike. I don't know if you tried it yet. The TVT engine oil additive. You've heard me talk about it. I've heard you talk about it. I have not tried it yet. The uh, uh, we'll get we'll hook you up at uh, at NRA. They're gonna. I think they're gonna send me some stuff. Okay. Right. TVT engine oil additive. The old lead sled has got 315,000 miles on her right now. Getting ready to have the fuel pump, um, new fuel pump put in and, uh, front brakes and something else it needs. But yeah, I'm, I'm just resuscitating her, keeping her going. And, uh, <laughs> the TVT, uh, helps with that. 315,000 miles and counting. I won't be driving to Dallas though. I won't have all that done in time to get her, get her to Dallas, unfortunately. But uh, the next the next event we have, we'll we'll get her out there. VanQuest, uh, all their lines of bags and backpacks. Uh, were you there when we did the interview with the guys from VanQuest at the Shot Show? With no, Alex? I missed that. I was there, but I wasn't part of the that show. So. Okay. Well, you didn't get that interview. Uh, they've got some awesome new backpacks um, that you guys can check out. I think they've got like a three day pack. Uh, that's one of those like carbon fiber framed, really high quality, lightweight. You can carry a lot of gear. Check them out at vanquest.com. Uh, and of course, Keltec. They were our official lead quarters at the 2018 Shot Show. Uh, big thanks to Keltec. And, uh, speaking of the Shot Show, we're going to have a, an interview. We're going to cut in an interview that we had with, uh, Diego from Geisley. And he's going to talk about some new things that Geisley has. And then also, uh, that new company that they've got, Abraham and Moses, the knife company that they started up. Um, we did an interview with Diego at Big Three, so we're going to cut those two interviews in with Diego uh, in between uh, me and Mike talking here. And then the big news is the release of the Talking Lead mugs, Talking Lead tumblers. 
yeah. with with the news of Yeti going, uh, I guess not renewing within with uh, um, NRA. I don't know the whole circumstances behind that. You know, some say that they tried and NRA didn't want the deal they were given, and then some say the Yeti just jumped on the bandwagon and was boycotting NRA. I don't know what the true story is, but it doesn't matter. Yetis are for snowflakes anyway. You want to get you an awesome talking lead tumbler that outlast a Yeti. I tested it, Mike. I did uh, I did a t- I did an eight hour test with three ice cubes in both, same size, the thirty ounces. And uh, at the end of it, the Yeti was still cold. The ice was all the way melted, but it was still, you know, still ice cold. But the talking lead tumbler cooler, there were still little chunks of ice in there, baby. Look how, look how nice that looks with that black is, shelf. Is that not sexy? You guys want these. You go to dip123.com forward slash talking lead, and we're running a special, a pre-order special, 25 bucks. That's unheard of. 25 bucks, you're going to get your evil black mug to go with your evil black rifle the assault, <laughs> the assault talking lead mug i like that that might be what we call it the assault tumbler assault mug. the assault mug <laughs> assault tumbler i like that um that may be the new official name we do have a contest so we are trying to come up with a cool uh fitting in the talking lead theme you know we have the lead sled we have the lead quarters uh, come up with a cool name for our our tumbler here, and uh, I think Mike's in the lead right now. But we've had we've had a couple of creative suggestions. Uh, lead loader, I think, was one. The cooler was one, um, and then now uh, the assault mug. I like that. It's just so scary. It's black. It's, it's black, it's and these are high quality. They're black powder coated. So this is that stuff that the automotive industry uses on like engines and stuff. So uh, these these things are even more durable than your Yeti because they got that extra coating on there. And that may have been why the ice yeah, stayed, why it stays colder. <laughs> it may have been why it stayed colder. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, and then you get the the logo, you know, the nice talking lead logo on there. Uh, and they're painted in. It's not a it's not a decal that's stuck on there. That is like painted in there, cooked, baked in there. So uh, it's gonna it's gonna last. You're supposed to hand wash them, so don't throw them in the the dishwasher. You got to hand wash these just like you do your other uh, Yetis and the last forever and ever and ever. But special twenty five bucks right now. Uh, go to dip one two three dot com. We may even put like a hashtag no snowflake on there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we, they haven't been made yet, so that's why we're taking the pre orders. Uh, and then we may also do something with seventeen seventy six. So there may be a seventeen seventy six logo thrown on here too. So you never know. Um, <clears throat> man, it's like an infomercial. <laughs> Yeah, you got a lot of products, man. <laughs> That's a good thing. We do, but this is good stuff. I mean, this is all high quality, high, high quality products. Um, good, good companies, good people, and you know that leadheads know that we only associate with products that I've personally used and uh, personally attest to. So uh, you know that you're getting good stuff from from these companies. And of course, 1776 United. You can go and get our t-shirts, uh, the new Leadhead Brigade t-shirts. Um, and then of course the classic, and we've got patches, guys. We've got the Lead Head Brigade patches out there too. I, I overlook those from time to time, but the patches are there too. So, uh, lots of, of stuff for you guys, lots of discounts to take advantage of. And, uh, Mike Sodini with Eagle Imports, uh, we made the announcement already. You guys may not have heard it, but they are the official lead quarters for the NRA annual meeting. Yeah. There you go. And, uh, Later on in the show, we're going to talk about why you need to come by Eagle Imports if you're going to be in Dallas. Um, you probably should just go ahead, and if you weren't even planning on going, go ahead and get your ticket, hotel room, and come down anyway because of the, all the cool stuff that we're going to be doing just at the Eagle Imports booth. So stay tuned for that while we take care of these jack wagons, as I hear that jack wagon train coming in, Mike. <laughs> it's always coming in hard when I'm on this show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. So, as uh, as you guys know, um, the gunny passed away, and we are all deeply saddened about that. And uh, we want to keep the memory of the gunny alive, so we are going to continue um, letting gunny honor us and uh, honor our 2A amendment rights by hauling off these jack wagons each week. So we've got a lot this week that we're throwing on. There's been a lot happened since the last episode. 
And uh, as always, I like to defer to our guest. And uh, Mike, I know you've got at least one or two that you want to throw on this week. So let's let you kick it off, brother. Well, why don't we start off with, uh, man, there's so many. Uh, Let's go with, with what's going on in your neck of the woods. Okay. All right, we could do that. So in Nashville, there uh, there was a, another mass shooting, mass murder that happened at a Waffle House, and again, it's it was done by a freaking nut job, nut case that had been profiled by the FBI, by local authorities. They all knew about him. They all knew he was a nut case. Uh, the authorities even took his guns away from him. His guns were taken away from him, but a stupid family member gave him access to those weapons again. And what did he end up doing? Went in and killed four people, injured four other ones. Uh, and it could have been a lot worse, but there was, you know, there was a guy who reached down deep inside and whether it was self, uh, self, uh, um, preservation. preservation uh, or just instinct. Uh, he's not calling himself a hero. He's saying he was just, you know, saving himself. But he's in doing that. I mean, he saved everybody else because that guy was going to kill everybody in there, and then probably move on to the next uh, store and go in there and, and kill a bunch more people. Um, so I want to, I want to, I want to say kudos to to the guy who stepped up, uh, and he was unarmed too. You know. He just decided that if this guy, and I think this was his his quote, if this guy was going to kill me, he was going to have to work for it. <laughs> That's uh, it's kind of a crazy thing. His name's uh, James Shaw Jr. There you um, go, James he, Shaw Jr. Yeah, he was uh, coming out of the bathroom, which is even crazier. Yeah. So, so if so you guys like, have ever been to a yeah, Waffle well, House, you know that, and it's usually back to the left. Sometimes it's, I guess it's back to the right. It just depends on how it's made. But they've got that little swinging door with the little little circle glass thing in it, and you go through there to go to the bathroom typically. And he was back there, right, when this guy came in shooting. Is that how that was? Yeah, and he heard the gunshots, and he came outside just to kind of <laughs> get out of there. Yeah. And uh, apparently he was, like, very close face-to-face with this maniac. And uh, I guess instincts kicked in. It's, it's weird. You know, you talk about that, like, self-preservation. Yeah. It's some people have it, some people don't. Some people will just freeze, some people will hide. It's kind of a fascinating thing. Uh you know, approach a guy with a gun. It is, you know, and that's that's the thing is that the majority of the people out there have never been in that that much of a stressful situation to where their body experiences that much. So you don't know how your body's gonna react. So that's why we stress that if you're gonna get a firearm there are training companies, training people out there that do this type training that put your body under these type stresses so that you know how your body's going to react and then how you can overcome the natural instinct to get that tunnel vision, to freeze up, to go into the fetal position and, and react and save yourself and save others. Um, don't know this guy's background. Uh, but it just sounded like he just made the decision that, you know, today's not going to be his day. This guy's not going to take him out. And he confronted him and was successful, thank goodness, uh, and saved the lives of not only himself, but, um, all the other patrons there. But that's the thing about it is you don't know until you put your body under that stress how it's going to happen. Why wait till a situation like this happens to find out how you're going to react? Go to these, these training companies, uh, um, like Rob Pincus, you know, Rob does these throughout the year, throughout the nation, you know, throughout the world. He goes all over the world and trains people for just these type situations. Um, is it under PDN or is it through his other company that he does does this? No, thing? He, he does it through PDN. Uh, he goes on tour. I've taken uh, a couple of his courses and they are intense. Yeah. And you definitely come out a better shooter. Uh you know, obviously, it's it's not a live situation, but it, it's definitely worth if he's in your town. Yeah, uh, it's in the course, it's it's badass. And yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's pressure. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, but it, it's the same type of stuff that this this kid has in him naturally. Um, what's crazy is I don't know if you've been watching the media though. There's so many people that are anti-gun that are like. Uh, a good guy without a gun stopped a bad guy with a gun, which is complete bullshit. We all know that if Mr. Shaw had a gun, 
Oh, he right. would have draw. He would have drew down on him in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh yeah. But here's um, another thing: is Waffle House is one of those safe zones. It's one of those they don't allow firearms in their facility. Right. You Which know? and and we all know that criminals obey laws, right? So I'm sure the guy got confused when he brought his AR-15 in there and started firing. Well, that's probably what happened. That's why he was shooting from outside. He's like, well, if I can't bring it inside, I'll just shoot. You know, shoot everything out here. Oh, but I God. mean, we we jest, but at the same time, this was another soft zone. He, you know, I'll guarantee you, this guy knew that, and uh, that was why he picked this target. Of course, I think it was close to where he lived too. But he was naked. He did it naked. He only had like a green coat on or something, and uh, he came in and uh, in just that green overcoat, naked. Which I'm sure that shocked and all a lot of people too. Is like, you know. I look at his junk or I look at the gun, you know, what's going on here? So, well, you, pro- you probably don't know if somebody's playing a joke or a prank. I mean, right. there's so much. Exactly. Confusion. Yeah. It's like, how do I react to this? So uh, that's why you, you go and you you take these class. And this is going to decide whether you want to carry or not, too. If you're kind of on the fence of, I don't know if I could, you know, I could actually use a gun to shoot another person, uh, defend myself, defend my family with a firearm. Take one of these courses and then you'll know after going through that course. You're going to know if you've got the guts to, to do what it takes to, to carry a firearm. And if you don't, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with, there's no law that says you have to carry. There's no, no law that says you have to own a gun. You have the right to do that if you, if you so choose. And that's great. But if you decide you don't want to, that's okay. You're probably going to be better off and we're going to be better off in the long run if you don't. I absolutely agree a thousand percent. It's, uh, I, you know, I, I tell everybody all the time too, because I, I have so many friends that are, are not in this industry or don't, don't have guns. And I say like, I feel that I feel the safest when I'm around people with guns, especially when I, like when I go to a show, a gun show, mm-hmm. how great is that feeling? You're just like, no one's going to be stupid in here. Yeah. And if something does pop off, we all know that there's people in here that can handle themselves, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> like, I love walking next to Rob Pincus. I <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, but that's, I mean, that's, that's my whole point in these, these soft zones too. They know they're not going to go to a place to where they know that the potential of them getting confronted, you know, they're going to go where the odds are the best. So they're going to hit these soft zones. That's why they're hitting these schools, these, uh, these restaurants that, that don't allow carry. Um, that's why they're doing it because they want to be, know that they can get away with the maximum amount of carnage before they are confronted or before they off themselves. And usually that's when they off themselves is when they're confronted. Um, I'm surprised at this guy. Uh, I think the story is they, they saw him walking into another store and he had a backpack and he had a gun in his backpack, but he, I guess he just couldn't get to it in time, but he, he just caved like a, like a little, uh, I don't know, little baby when they confronted him, told him to get down, he complied and they took him in. But we're going to find that this guy is just a, he's a nutcase. There's been several other prior in- uh, in- instances where um, he thought Taylor Swift was stalking him. Um, he went to that the. Might be true though, man. She's kind of a. <laughs> well, she's, she's stalking you too, Mike. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Taylor, Swift. Taylor Swift. I feel like Taylor Swift is the most obtainable star as long as you could get next to her. <laughs> <laughs> you got a shot. <laughs> yeah, you got a shot. She's so many different. No, in all seriousness, yeah, he's batshit crazy. Yeah, he uh, is. He went to the White House. Um, Wanted to talk to President Trump, said he was a sovereign citizen. He had the right to inspect the grounds or something like that. And that's when they, um, the FBI um, r- had the Illinois authorities revoke his his right to own the, gu- the firearms. And that's when they took him away. But then they gave him back to his father. Um, and I think the guy's last name's Ryan King or something like that. Jeffrey Ryan King is the father's name. And the father gave him back to him. After the authority said he's you know he's not allowed to have these, we're giving these back to you and trusting you with these. And what did he do? He gave them back to him. That's a pattern that we're seeing in, like I said, a lot of these shootings to where, like in Columbine, uh, those kids uh, got access through family members to those firearms. The one down in Florida, um, the um, the Newtown. That, yeah, yeah. Of course, he killed his mother to get those. Um, I don't I don't think that was a voluntary thing. So. Um, it's still giving access to, but the, uh, it, again, it doesn't matter. All the laws you can pass, people, the authorities did everything the right way in this case for the Nashville thing. They, uh, they had the weapons seized. They gave them to a licensed, responsible family member, 
Uh, that family member is the one, and, and you're not seeing these family members prosecuted or face any consequences in these, these instances where they should be. So this guy, they need to set the example with this father right here, and they need to prosecute him to the maximum extent of the law. Because that's that's another thing that we're seeing. Again, it doesn't matter all the laws you 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 can pass if the family members are enabling them and and giving them the the means to do these horrible acts of murder and violence. Then you know all the laws in the, in the world aren't going to stop that. Well, yeah, and it's you know we've talked about this before. Enforcing the laws on the books. I mean, even straw purchases. You know, if I buy a gun for a friend of mine that I know has a felony, but I feel like he needs to be able to protect himself. I should be prosecuted uh, to the fullest extent yeah. if that happens. Um, I, you know, I don't understand why this happens. I really don't. I, I, I got two kids. I got a 10 year old and a 12 year old. I got one. I love her to death. I, I wouldn't leave her alone in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I got the other one I would leave for three days. <laughs> but right, I mean, as a parent, you know your kids. You know, you know the extent that you're comfortable trusting them with certain responsibilities. Right, like driving, everything. Right. I mean, and, it's. But as a responsible parent, no matter how much they whine, they bitch, they moan, they say they don't love you, you don't love them because you won't let them do this. You can't cave in because you know what's best for them. You know, these kids that are trying to enact these gun laws on us um, is ridiculous. They don't see the bigger picture. It's, it, you know, it's just it, it's just them being puppets for these liberal left gun grabbers that are giving them the spotlight, making them feel important, and just saying what they feel that these adults want them to say to make them feel good. And that's what that's what all this this Florida all these school walkouts that's all it's about. If you ask the majority of these kids why they're there, like, I didn't have to go to school today. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I had some theory in my head that if the school bus was 10 minutes late, you didn't have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same concept, right? It's like, oh, let's walk out during school. Uh, Is that like the five-second rule when you drop yeah. food on the floor? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it, it is it, – it's interesting to see the narrative that they have uh, – and it's, it is tough right now to talk about those things or I actually follow a lot of those guys on Twitter because I like to see what they say. Um, just so I'm aware of, of their beliefs or try to understand them a little bit, but it is, it's really, it, it almost becomes obnoxious. It's very hard to do Yeah, because you see them say blatant lies or you see the, like, for example, the little David Hogg kid, he didn't, I didn't see anything. I, I didn't see him say anything about Canada. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. guy, a, a minivan or a van and just mows down a bunch of people and it's crickets <laughs> right like, or that father that was uh it was it the chuck e cheese had his kid on his lap and the dude come up and stabs him in the neck oh the one in california with the homeless guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you hear him that talk was, about that yeah it wasn't even a, that was an outdoor he was sitting on the patio of a restaurant yeah holding kid with his wife and a homeless guy just came up and stabbed him in the neck with a knife just random acts of violence you, you can't right. predict you can't law you can't law that out of existence it just you just can't do it it just no, it just doesn't happen and even if that guy was armed at the same time i mean that's something that you're not prepared for somebody just comes up and just stabs you in the neck you know? Yeah, that's just, that's getting the jump on somebody, and that could happen anywhere. Anybody, you know? anybody, and, yeah, anytime. I, I I don't know. It's a tough. It, but you make a good point. I mean, that it's just it, it was just a random act that nobody could have predicted. Um, nobody would have you know could have been prepared for something like that. But then that's why you get first aid, you know, training. You get medical training because when something like that that happens, because you're going to need that more than you're going to need. Uh, odds are you're going to need your medical training before you're going to need your firearm training. You know, to save somebody's life. Absolutely, uh, I think that's a very underrated. I, I think even the fact that most people don't know how to get proper CPR. Oh yeah. As a parent, when it, that was one of the first things I knew I needed to learn. Uh, and then when you learn it, you're like, man, why doesn't everybody do this? Or why this should be a course yeah. in, in class? You know, should be uh, a a standard um, educational course in our our K through twelve. Yeah. Absolutely. Put it in there uh, so it happens every year so people get refreshed and it's like training and then, uh, you know, it becomes second nature where they're able to jump into those situations. Exactly. Exactly. Instead of, uh, you know, 
first instinct when these things happen, when a you know tragedy happens, what do people do? They go to their phone. They grab they grab their phone and then they start looking and going through their phone and trying to find somebody that they can call and and talk about it and and tell about it. Do, do you remember last week the the plane Southwest? Yeah, I was watching that unfold on the television, like literally. Like I'm looking, I'm going. People are actually filming. The plane is probably going down. They're gonna die, and they're filming their, first their death. Action is to film. Is to go to social media. You know, and that's the thing too. If you think about it, in in these mass shootings, when when things like this happen, and I don't, I haven't heard about the the Waffle House one because it, I think it was done and over with pretty quick. I don't know if people really had the opportunity, but. Uh, like in the Las Vegas shooting, in that nightclub shooting down in, in Florida. What, what did people do? They reached into their pockets. They grabbed a piece of technology, a tool, their phone, and they commenced to contacting someone that they loved or knew to let them know what was going on, to say that they loved them, to do this, to do that. Where, I mean, if you've got that much time, if you had a firearm and you had the training, instead of reaching in and pulling out your phone and concentrating on your contacts and your text messages, you've got enough time and you've got enough awareness to take a firearm out and point and concentrate and focus that front fo- front post site on the threat and take the threat out. Am I wrong? No, you're a thousand percent. I don't know. I mean, it just sounds like common sense to me. I was watching some documentary on uh, Netflix and they were talking about that there. And I was like, you know what? That is a great freaking point right there this guy's making. Uh, I can't remember the documentary, but it was on, I think it was either Netflix or it was um, Amazon, one of those. Well, that's the thing. Like, we, I mean, we just touched on that. If you're, if you could stay calm enough to pull out your phone and start recording, mm-hmm. start Facebook living or, or calm enough, like my, I think, I would assume if I'm on a plane and it's going down or as an active shooter, I've never been in that situation, but my, my, my assumption, and this is why you do training is that my hands would be shaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I might not be able to contact, so I'm going to be able to write properly. So if you can do that, which these people clearly show they can, right. It, they definitely would. Be able but that's to- the thing. That's the thing too, is they've got so much training on how to use this piece of technology. That they right. know they could probably do it not even looking at it and know how many clicks and where their app is that they need to click and get it going. Same thing with, with firearm training. If you train as much as you use your phone with firearm training, just half as much. Then when you get in that situation, it's muscle um what it's a muscle memory. Muscle memory, thank you. Yeah. Muscle memory. Uh and that's what you're gonna be trained to do, and that's what your body's gonna do. And you're gonna be focused and aware enough to be able to Defend yourself, defend others. And even if it's just like this guy, you know, it's just hand to hand, you know, train that way as well. When you don't have the opportunity to get your firearm, because a lot of these confrontations are up close and you may not yep. have the opportunity to get that out. It's quicker to, you know, grab the guy and detain him somehow. Oh, definitely. And then there's, uh, I think I was reading somewhere, I think Rob posted at Pincus somewhere where it said, uh, a lot of these guys do give you the opportunities. Most people will look down to reload. Mm hmm. Like they look at the, the weapon to reload and that's your, there, that's a, a lifetime in that situation. If you could tackle a guy or, you know, yeah. Try and to, the, this guy clearly demonstrated that. Is right. It, he's like, he took the opportunity. He saw that the guy was distracted, uh, and he acted, he jumped on it. Didn't hesitate. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. So, um, the, the father throwing him on the jack wagon train for giving this guy his, his fires back. Uh, also associated with this, we've got an acting mayor in Nashville now, uh, David Briley, and he took this uh, because there's there's a campaign to get the new mayor. He's just the acting mayor, the existing mayor. I don't know if you guys know the story, but anyway, she was uh, like banging her bodyguard <laughs> and sending him all on all these lavish trips and stuff with her, and giving him like a billion hours overtime pay, and so she got ousted uh, to say the least. Uh, so this new guy that's in there acting mayor, uh, there's like three candidates, I think, running now. But he took this opportunity to grandstand. Uh, obviously, I mean, that's what we see liberals do. They they take a tragedy and they try to, to springboard that into their um, political campaigns. 
His quote is, we need comprehensive gun reform to address mass shooting, domestic shootings, accidental shootings, and homicides. Uh, Briley said in a news conference where Metro Police, FBI, and other law enforcement provided updates on the shooting. Uh, and I was listening to this. I was on my way back from the Sheepdog Impact Assistance Charity Ball, which was a huge success, by the way. Uh, thank you to all the companies that, that took part in that and donated to that. Caltech, Palmetto State Armory, uh, Abe and Mo Knives, Defy Watches, Ride on Optics. Our package raised nearly $5,000 at auction for, for Sheepdog. Uh, and the total, the total, uh, was like 70,000. I think uh, we raised total, uh, during that, uh, Heroes Gala. So had to, had to throw that in there. Um, and where was I going? Shit. <laughs> I, I see squirrels all the time. Uh, this mayor, grand, grandstanding, uh, it said, if we can all just come together for the greater good, we can take these weapons of war off the streets of our country. Briley said. Uh, I don't know if it also says on here, too, um, but he said something about AR-15s uh, are only used for mass murders. He may, he actually made that statement. I was listening to this when it from because I was on that nine-hour. That's where I was at. I was on the nine-hour drive home from uh, Arkansas, and that's when this news broke, and you know we, we listened to it pretty much the whole way, and I was getting updates, and that was the first thing that this mayor did. That was the first words out of his mouth were going into uh, jumping on his political campaign about gun reform and gun laws. It's amazing how they're how I had this conversation with my cousin the other day. So he makes a statement like that. Right. And yeah. clearly he's never done any research at all. Like zero. Mm -hmm. Like that just proves it. Right. Like zero research. Um, it's amazing how they can get away with that. No one challenges them. Like everybody has to know with the amount of AR-15s that are sold in the United States, clearly people are doing other things and using them for killing. Yeah. And or, I, we, or we only sell like 20 a year. And I guarantee you the guy's educated on this and he knows, but they, they blatantly and purposely make these false claims. You, you're giving them that much credit? Yeah. I, yeah. They're smart. They're, they're doing, that is their, that is their agenda. They know that 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 works, that you can make false claims and people aren't going to critically think the opposite. They're just going to take your word for it. And that's what the, you know, that's what they bank on that people are stupid. Yeah, that's true. I never thought about it that I'm way. Telling I, guess. You, I mean, these guys are well-educated people. They don't, they know, you know, they know statistics. They know, um, that the firearms aren't the issue. They're just trying to grandstand, go after something that they feel that the entire, uh, world is against, and they're on the same side, which we well, know for a fact that the majority of the people, especially in this country, are not for that. Right. And, and the other thing, I guess, that proves that point is that, you know, it's kind of like the, the rhetoric, the, it's empty. It's like, I'll make a statement. We need to get these things off the streets, but they give no explanation mm -hmm. or plan of action. No. So, it's like, okay, I'll listen to it if you have something intelligent to say or maybe an idea, but it never is. It's always this kind of like, But you know, that is job security for a politician is you elect me and I am going to get in here and I'm going to write laws. I'm going to work with people and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It's job security because it's like, hey, I'm still working on this, so you need to reelect me. You know, we haven't got this done yet, so we need to you need to reelect me so that we can continue this uh you know, this fight that you started when you first elected me. It's just, you know, that it's just, it's, it's ammo for them. I don't know, I hate to use the word ammo, but fuel for them, uh, and a crutch for them to keep their, their job security as a politician, as a representative, as a mayor, as a, you know, whatever it may be. That's my yeah. theory on it. It, it. It's funny because, it, you know, growing up in Jersey, I never, <laughs> Jersey. I, I just figured that everybody in the South was super pro gun when I was young. It's weird to hear mayors actually say idiotic things or lie. <laughs> it's, it, just you know, come out and blatantly lie. Yeah, just give yeah. Bla blatantly made up false statistics, uh, and that's you know that's what these guys do. So that's why you got to critically think. You just can't take somebody's word for it. And the leadheads know that. They know that these uh, majority of these uh, gun grabbing politicians and uh, advocates. Or, you know, they're just doing this so that they can be seen, so they, they can be heard, that they've got a, you know, a platform that gets them in the spotlight for a little bit. 
you know, that's. Now, if you, do you think if you interviewed him, like if he came on the show and was uh, sat down, which I know that that would never happen because yeah. he would be exposed, but like, so if you said, why, what, 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 what are the things you're going to do? Like, why, mm -hmm. why do you, why do you want this? What do you think is going to help? Mm -hmm. What do you think some of the things he would say are? It's going to be the, the same, the same script they all have. Raise the age to 21, which is worthless, right? right. That's a big. Exactly. Uh, do the assault weapons ban. Put, you know, ban bump stocks. They're going to do that same thing, which they're not banning bump stocks. They're banning anything that increases the rate of fire uh, on a firearm. So that's a trigger. That's a handguard. That's a gas system. That's uh, it could be a grip. It could be a butt stock. You know, it could be your finger. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, so uh, it, the bump stocks are not mentioned in that legislation anywhere. The word bump stock is not mentioned anywhere. They're just using that because of it gained fame and notoriety, notoriety during the, the Las Vegas shooting. So it's something people can quickly, easily identify as something evil that they saw in the news. Yeah. You know, when you hear bump stock now, what what's the first thing you think of Las Vegas shooting? That's right. And that's, well, yeah, that's why they do that. It was never used before in a crime. So, yeah. and there's no proof that he actually used a gun that had the bump stock on it. I think in that either they were they were just there. Yeah, there were some that were there. So I don't. I mean, I don't. Know. And that just kind of disappeared and and went away. The Las Vegas shooting. I don't hear any more about it. Well, living in Las Vegas, I hear rumors about stuff, but it did definitely died out. I, I mean, and I think it was kind of like a nine eleven deal. Like every once in a while, you're going to have those movie type tragedies. Yeah. You know, on a large scale. Where you're like, I never even thought about that. You know, like that's crazy. And, and that's what happened. And, and listen, he was lobbing bullets into basically a huge crowd across the street. I live in Vegas. I've, I've been at that hotel many times, ate dinner right above where he was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it wasn't a tough thing to do if you're a maniac. Um, you know, it's yeah. just something you never think someone's going to do, right? Like most people you meet, you're like, yeah, hey, he's not going to go shoot up a school or go shoot up a concert. It's just natural to think, but what he did was that was some movie stuff. That was like some Michael Bay type deal, you know, the bad well, guy gets out there. Yeah, it's one of those larger than life kind of situations that you would think only would happen in a movie. But again, we don't hear, you know, why? What was his motive? Why did he do it? What, you know, um, how did he get all those? I mean, they they did a little bit of it, but we didn't really get to the meat, the core of of that it just kind of got swept under the rug now i watched another doc i'm big on documentaries dude so <laughs> there was this this <laughs> other one i can't remember the name of it but it specifically was uh based on the corruptness of the uh vegas police department really okay yeah. that's interesting i yeah. i have i yeah. mean there there's a lot of you hear a lot about that, but you never know what's a conspiracy theory or what, you know. Yeah. This was a, a very good doc. Man, I, I can't remember the documentary. I think if you just Google documentaries about Las Vegas police or the, the shooting, it'll come up. Uh, but, it, I mean, they had a lot of good facts going on in there about how the police chief, you know, was covering a lot of stuff up and, um, he was running for, well, actually he wasn't running for reelection, but the guy right under him was running for reelection. And there was this other guy that was a SWAT guy that was running, uh, and his campaign was, you know, reform and changing. And of course he didn't win. The other guy won. Um, uh, but they talked a lot about, uh, how the police department and the casinos have this agreement and that there's like, like a 911 line. There's a special 911 line that casinos call that's for their big, they're big spenders. They're whales, they call them. Right. So um, that's that's why a lot of the miscommunication happened is that the people were calling in on the special line, so the 911 people weren't getting you know the full story and weren't able to coordinate with the uh, with the ground patrols. So I mean, I don't know. It was just it was, it was interesting. It was it was the most wild surreal experience because I had just I had taken my daughters to the hockey game. And, uh, we, we actually passed the concert going home. And, um, I remember cause like people were in the streets. This is, this was well before it happened. I was able to get home and yeah. sit on my couch and watch, but, um, uh, it, it was crazy. I was getting more information from my friends texting than the news. Than the news. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of surreal. And I remember at first they were saying like, there's like six shooters walking through casinos, but what it was is people were running into casinos bloodied up. 
Yeah. And, you know, people were thinking there was more than one shooter. It was a very interesting, you know. It, it, well, I mean, something like that happens and you got people falling left and right. Um, I mean, you're naturally going to think and you're not going to be looking up. You're going to be looking, you know, eye level through the crowd, see what's see what's going on. So the confusion with that many people there. Oh, my gosh. I'm. I don't Was there people like trampled and, and hurt that way? Too? I'm sure there were. Oh, absolutely. We had a, a friend of mine was there, and it, it was funny. She's she's uh, tall, blonde. She was said she said she was wearing heels. She said she was hammered, you know, because they were having a good time drinking. Yeah, and it was like she she was like everybody. This everyone starts running, and I don't even know what to do. She's like, I ran out of my shoes. She's like, I made it all the way to the MGM. I mean, and she's just like, I'm hammered, you know, yeah. <laughs> like. But that's the thing, too, is nobody knows which way to run because they don't know where the shots are coming from. So it's just people are just going everywhere crazy. Mass hysteria. And like I said, alcohol is involved. So people are, you know, probably a little tipsy drunk, too. I'm sure that added to the the confusion and hysteria. Um, The other thing that's crazy about so, like, let's say there is no conspiracy and then people Mm want to know why. And I think it's always the red elephant in the room. Like, maybe he was just crazy maybe he was just evil he was just pure evil pure evil crazy and that's what i think scares people because it's like you don't want to you you kind of want to you want to save that for the movies right you Mm -hmm. don't want to walk around your casino or your neighborhood and think that there's a maniac out there that there's nothing wrong he has Mm -hmm. no motive well that's that's something that's unique about these last two shootings here with uh with the parkland and the the nashville is we've got a survivor, a shooter that's that's not dead, that they can actually, hopefully, they'll take advantage of that and study these people. And Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's some system of studying it, obviously, like the FBI, and they, they have all these people that profile yeah. and stuff like that. But Psychiatrist, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. I just wonder, though, what if, what, what if it's like a rabid dog? Like, what if there's nothing, I mean, you know. It's we, a disease? All, it's a disease that there's no cure for? Well, the medications that everybody takes these days, you know, I mean, I think I, that's a big part of why people go nuts and crazy is the med, all the medication that people take. It just, it, your body has its own chemical balance and you try to go in and change and modify and it just yeah, seems I mean, to make people worse. Yeah. You, you, people, I, I have friends that, that take Ambien and they've gone into these Ambien trances oh, where they've heard those stories. Fall asleep. Yeah. And they were like, I didn't remember what I did. So let's say you have violent tendencies or whatever, you're crazy, and you take an ambient. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many different scenarios. I just think that that's the scariest part, and no one wants to admit that. What if there is no motive? What if it's just absolute evil? Yeah. You know? I think that's what you're going to find out in a lot of these these cases. That, I mean, uh, most- that one guy, the movie th- guy's alive too, isn't he? The movie theater, in, uh, was it Colorado? Yeah, yeah. He's still alive too, isn't it? Isn't he? Well, I'll do yeah, some research and see what they found on him. I'll check do, you, do, you ever, do you ever do this? I don't know why I do this, but like, as soon as they show the guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's batshit crazy. Look at him. You could tell. He's batshit, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could tell he was going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they knew he was going to do it because they had already profiled him and they had uh, but they tagged like the, him as being nuts. They find like the worst photos of these guys where their eyes are big and they look like the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why weren't they on him sooner? Like, <laughs> How do you not know this guy's batshit crazy? <laughs> the first the first picture they got of this dude is like from his driver's license. I think he left it in his car or something, and uh, that's the one that they had posted. And I mean, he just looks like a little snowflake, you know, just a teenage idiot snowflake that would snort a condom up his nose or eat a Tide Pod, you know. Yeah, it's a shame. It, I mean, I, I guess it's great for her, the, him to be studied. I just feel like you're never going to get anything from these wackos. So I'd almost rather have like I don't know. I'm I'm sick like that though. I'd rather have like public execution. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think we could uh, definitely you know not necessarily kill or execute, but the 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 dad definitely needs to be made an example of a public example, and it needs to be spread everywhere. It's like you know you're the cause of this. You know, Columbine, you're the parents, you're the cause of this. You know, if you had better supervision over your kids, locked up your firearms, I don't know, man. It's just, I, look, I, none of these, none of these family members get, get prosecuted or punished. And that's, that's the thing. You know, you don't ever see that. 
Yeah, I know. And if they do, it's not publicized because no one wants to talk about it, but they should. Mm-hmm. I mean, look. Because they won't talk about the gun. It's the gun. Right, it's a gun. It's the object, like white vans yeah. in Canada. You know, they should be outlawed. Whatever good comes from a white van. It's like the joke. Everybody says that this guy is going to kidnap you in the white van. <laughs> in the white van, yeah. <laughs> and now they're running people down with it. No, but seriously, like I, I lived in Singapore for a while and uh, when I was in high school. And they have like a very strict no drug policy. And if you break it, <laughs> you die. And that's it. And a lot of people would be uncomfortable with that, but I'll tell you what, it worked. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? I didn't meet anybody there that did drugs. <laughs> like, so, you know, if you have these, you back up these laws and you publicize the punishments, maybe it'll make some of these maniacs think twice. Who knows? Maybe they won't. But, you know, we don't, that's, you know, in this conversation, and this, this one, we could probably talk about this for five hours, but, yeah. like, these are the things that, you know, HIPAA, you know, that protect people's mental health. You know, uh, these are the rights that people, they look, they, they don't want people to be able to tell like, Hey, I don't want anyone to know I'm on Adderall or I take this medication, but, but we might have to start going towards these other rights. If we want to stop some of this mental health, because I think it starts with mental health. It's not the gun, you know? Well, that's the thing we're seeing in all these is that there's some sort of mental breakdown on these people. Um, right, but and people, but people know that they know, you know it. I mean? they, yeah, they, they know, it, but it's still the guns' fault. Yeah, if absolutely. we get rid of guns, the, their mentality is: we get rid of the guns. If there are no guns available for them to have, then they they can't use a gun for a murder. Which is, I want to say that's true. You know, let's say there are all guns. Just miraculously, an alien came and took every firearm off the face of the earth. Well. People are going to use bats. They're going to use bombs. They're going to use knives. They're going to use Vans. murder. And uh, evil is still going to exist, and it's going to happen. You're not going to minimize it by that. All you're doing is taking away a innocent person's ability to protect himself um, better, um, quicker, faster by taking away the firearm. Yeah, planes. I mean, look at look at nine eleven. Oh my Look gosh, how, yeah. Well, that's the biggest mass murder, right? Yeah. It, 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 well, besides, like, if you're looking at, like, Pearl Harbor and stuff like that. but Well, you're like, looking at, yeah, like, genocide, like, right. going on in Syria right now. Yeah, but, I mean, like, that's that's crazy. And every time a plane Jeez. crashes, 300 people die. So, it doesn't happen all the time. I mean, I'm just putting it in perspective. Yeah, right? but I mean, you, you, it could be used. Like, and it was obviously proven that a plane could be used and killed what? How many thousand? Five thousand? Seven thousand people in New York? I don't remember how many it killed in nine eleven. It was a, it was a lot. It was up there. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But I mean, that's our point. You know, the the point is the guns are not. They they've just been evilized and made the center of focus and attention. That if we get rid of these, but all that's going to happen is that you're going to become unable to defend yourself when that government decides that they want to put you under their thumb for good and you're not going to be able to defend yourself. So, yes, we need weapons as good as, just as good as the military has for when that day comes, if it ever comes, that we can protect ourselves or a tyrannical government that comes on our soil decides to attack us that's the thing is we already don't get the weapons that the the we don't everybody knows that we all have m4s that were fully automatic those web those laws should not (laughs) should not exist we should have the ability to have fully automatic again i mean background um, people who can responsibly own those should own those even though it's your right if you're not if you're cuckoo you don't get it (laughs) you know if you're capable of doing um, mass violent type things with that and you've, you've proven and shown that, then you don't get it. You know, those laws are in place already. But don't punish law-abiding citizens to be able to enjoy, have those God-given. I mean, it's, it's your inalienable right. It's not even God. It's just your right to survive. It's your right to live. I mean, I don't, what's the word for that? I mean, they, they say God-given. You know, it's your God-given right. You know, there's no law, there's no written thing that, that gives you the right to do that, to protect yourself. You know, firearms are the same way. That's that's a way to do that. Well, and and everybody always told me growing up, you got to learn from history. Look at history, look at history. And then all of a sudden they... 
But Mike, when they're trying to erase history and say it never happened, then <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a whole nother whole nother show right there, man. Yeah, no, no doubt. But that's our. That, I'm throwing that that uh, mayor Briley, David Briley, who's running for mayor. Uh, there's another candidate on the ticket, so Nashvilleians, make sure you vote for Ralph Bristol. Uh, he is a pro two A guy. You can listen to nine nine seven nine nine seven T. I think it's T N. What is it? I don't uh, ninety nine seven on the radio dial. I don't know W W T N. I think is what it is. Um, He's on there all the time talking, but uh, Ralph Bristol, that's who you need to vote for for mayor of Nashville. I don't live in Nashville, so I can't vote in that. I live in uh, Murfreesboro, Rutherford County. Uh, but I feel that if your state capital, Nashville is your state capital, I feel that everybody in the state should have the right to vote for that mayor because he not only represents you know, just that city, but he's representing your state capital, which represents your whole state. So I think that law should be changed. There you go. Your own uh, segment of a show there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, what he got on national TV, and people see Nashville as the capital of of Tennessee, so they think Tennessee. So this mayor's on there making these statements that don't represent the majority of Tennesseans, and but that's the way people take it. So I think we should all have a right to vote in the Nashville mayor electoral coming up. But that's just that's just me. I'm a, I got a different way of thinking, you know, Mike. You know how I am. So your jack wagon. I know you've got a jack wagon. Let's talk about your jack wagon. I got a jack wagon. Well, and, and you know, um, I think I've, I've mentioned on your show before. I'm friends with Mindy Robinson. Um, mm -hmm. She is uh, the girlfriend of Randy Couture. Uh, good people. Uh, the actor, real, the actor Randy Couture, or the rest. Wait a minute, that's the same guy. Uh, isn't it? Same guy. <laughs> He's the UFC uh, former light heavyweight champion and heavyweight champion, um, and he is a big Second Amendment guy. Um, does a lot to support the troops. He's in the uh, Expendables. He was in the Expendables. He's actually that's what he does now. He basically films movies. He's still got his gym out here. Um, I just did a benefit with him for the Randy Couture GI Foundation. We donated a few guns, um, which he helps these wounded warriors. Uh, good, good guy. Very cool. Yeah. Mindy is a great, great lady. She uh, she's very funny. She has a website. Um, it's AmericanAFMindy.com. Uh, she blogs. She does a lot of uh, movies that are pro Second Amendment, mm -hmm. um, and she was in uh, that that movie Range Fifteen. Yep, which was the um, uh, what's Matt's last name? Um, oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. The um, wait a minute, I get it right here. Uh, why why is he not Danny Trejo is top cast in the range fifteen. <laughs> Danny Trejo, Sean Astin, William Shatner, David Keith, uh Brian Callen, Ron Jeremy was in that. <laughs> and then of course Mindy uh was in that. Jim O'Hare, Martin Dale Dye, uh Ross Patterson, Melanie Specht, Matt Best. There we go. Why can I not think of Matt Best? He was the star and he's not top billed. <laughs> That's we're getting old. We don't remember things. I know, um, man. Uh, my brain. <laughs> I just had uh, eye surgery, by the way. Uh, I can see in stereo now, Mike. Um, there you go. Nice. Got my how's cataract taken out. And how's the recovery going? It uh, it's, it's good. I still have floaters uh, okay. in that eye, but I I mean, it's, it's a world of difference in how I see now. I never knew I was blind or how bad <laughs> I was blind. Um, but it's like I had cellophane over that eye before. Um, but yeah, it's great. Once the floaters get cleared, I said it takes about three weeks and then I'll be good to go. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I see how that affects your shot. I, I know. And, uh, he said I can, I'm cleared to go to the range now. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go out and shoot today actually when we get done and, uh, test it out and see, see what happens. You might find out you have like sniper abilities. I already had that. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so listen, back to Mindy. Uh, back to Mindy, yes. Uh, and we were talking about The Range 15. If you guys haven't seen that movie, it's a great movie. But she's in a lot of other movies as well. Um, she's in a lot of other movies. And what she she's funny because she actually 
if you sit down with her, she, she is kind of like a comedian. She's a pretty funny lady. And she basically goes online and her deal is she kind of keeps liberals kind of honest. Keep them in check. Yeah. He calls them out and she's so quick witted that, you know, a lot of times I get frustrated and, you know, she writes about it, but this, this, this latest thing that she, she did. And if you go to the website and I don't know if, are you on there right now? Uh, um, I'm on her IMD page, but I'll go to her website right now. I'm on yes. her Facebook page too. Yeah. It's American AF Mindy.com. American as fuck Mindy.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she called out a, a Hollywood, uh, basically socialite, a basically a director. She, the lady has a, um, um, a documentary of some sort, uh, and basically called her out on calling out somebody who she got fired because this person disagreed, disagreed with her views. Um, and at first it was just fun and games like going back and forth. And now it's turned into this thing where this lady who says she doesn't get people fired because they disagree with her views is trying to get Mindy fired off from some of the sets she's written the directors that trying to get her blacklisted from Hollywood yes. basically. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's kind of ironic, right? Cause that's what she supposedly doesn't do. Yeah. Um, and hypocrite. This, hypocrite. Yep. Her name's Lisa Heslov. Lisa and, Heslov. Uh, yeah. Never heard and of her. You gotta, yeah. Right. I mean, who has it's, uh, but you got to go there and read it, but that's one that goes on the jack wagon train because, and, and Mindy is chronicling what's been going on, but it's almost ridiculous. And, and this lady's doing the typical thing. Like I'm going to get a restraining order out against you. Like, really? <laughs> we don't even live in the same state. Like, wow. <laughs> just, you know, yeah, and she's it, like getting her, her name wrong and everything. she's like done a background check on Mindy and it wasn't the right Mindy. And she's accusing her of all these, um, crimes and felonies. It's not her. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because when I text Mindy the other night, I, I, I basically had said to her, I said, is this lady really doing all this to you over this because you don't agree with her or you called her out? And Mindy was like genuinely confused. She's like, you know, what's weird is she's like, she keeps telling people I have a felony and I done this and that. And she's like, and I've, I've never even been in trouble at all with the law. So she's like <laughs> getting really bad information from somewhere. And I think Mindy figured it out, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and she was saying that, that her name wasn't her name. It was an alias. And she uses right. all these aliases and it's like, Mindy's like, that's my God given name. <laughs> yeah. Mindy Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So this but. Lisa Heslov, L-Y-S-A-H-E-S-L-O-V, uh, I mean, she just looks like a fucking prude. You pull her up on uh, on the internet on IMDb here, but she's not done anything. Looks like she's just probably married into some money or something uh, to a guy who's uh, in the biz, and she just latched onto his coattails and done a few things here, but nothing you've ever heard of. Um well, and it's, and it's all chronicled there, so you can kind of see the progression of how this argument happened. It's basically, on her website? You go to her website? Yeah, and, and you know, whether or not you agree with how it originally happened, it, it's one of those things where it's an example of somebody who doesn't agree with someone, tries to get someone fired, right? And then when they get called out on it, literally hits the explosion button. You know, which is a super liberal way of handling things. It seems like these days. Yeah. It's like that thing. If you don't agree with me, then you're just a racist and you want children to die. Right. Yeah. Like, if you don't agree with my viewpoint on how this should be done, then you want kids to die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it, it's the, it's the goofiest, uh, way of thinking. Yeah. And it, they do the shame game. They try to shame you into, um, their point of view. Well, yeah. And that's, that's why people don't, I mean, I think that's why, I think that's why people lie when polls call, like CNN calls. <laughs> like, oh, Hillary, hang up. It's just like, you don't want to feel bad about yourself. If, right. You know, like that, that type of thing. You're just going to tell them anything they want to hear. Right. Cause how can you have a debate with somebody if they're going to use what you say against you and make you feel stupid or try to label you as a racist or whatever? You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's exactly what happens in these situations. But definitely yeah. guys go to Mindy's website, uh, American AF and especially you guys who like to, uh, I'll 
quote the word troll these liberals. Uh, she's she's very good at that, and you can uh, join her in doing that and uh, helping push and promote our our Second Amendment rights and our First Amendment rights. I mean, as Second That's- Amendment pro- proponents, our First Amendment rights are severely inhibited and and squashed. Well, look at look what happened to her. She got banned from Facebook. Uh, yeah. And and it was literally people giving her death threats and saying things, but they banned her. So you can even see that those articles on there. We got to get her on the show. Yeah, I would love to have her on. We need to get her on. Yeah, you have to. Like, she's a breath of fresh air. Let's let's plan on doing that after uh, NRA getting her on. Okay. And you you can co-host with me with uh, while she's on. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let her go. Yeah. Cause I, I can imagine that you and I won't say a word and she'll, she'll be, she'll be talking the whole time, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> I love <Right>. that. <laughs> it takes the pressure off. It <laughs> does. I love it when I just throw a question out there and then they just, and you don't ever hear from lefty anymore. Except for, <laughs> oh, that's, that's been it for another edition of the talking lead show. <laughs> no doubt. Now she looks like she'd be fun to have on. So yeah, I I would love if you could arrange that, man. That would be awesome. I know the leadheads would love it too. Yeah, I'll definitely get her on. Cool, cool. So I got to cut into these. Uh, I still hadn't done that. We we need to wrap up the jack wagon train. So uh, make sure you guys go to uh, Mindy Robinson's Facebook page. It's uh, I Heart Mindy page. It's at I Heart Mindy page. And it's I, the letter I, H E R T M I N D Y page. That's her Facebook page. And then AmericanAFMindy.com is her website. And let her know that you heard about her on the, uh, the Talking Lead Show, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably already following her. She's, she's way bigger than we are. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, it's not like I'm doing her any favors. So <laughs> she's, she's far surpassed us as far as the uh, followers and whatnot. Um, but if you haven't seen that movie Range Fifteen, you got to watch it. It's a hilarious movie. I love that movie, and it's got yeah. all those big name stars in it too. You know, in a in a gun movie, you know, in a uh, all intents and purposes, it's a two A Range Fifteen, two A movie. Danny Trejo, Sean Astin, William Shatner, Captain Kirk for God's sake, Captain Kirk, <laughs> Captain freaking Kirk, Keith David. He's in everything. I love Keith David. Um, Ron Jeremy, holy crap! I mean, I'm going through this and just seeing some of these names that are uh, Marcus Latrell's in it. <laughs> Marcus is in there. Uh, Brian Callen, the the comedian, he's good. Yeah, or MMA guy. What's his name? Tim well, Kennedy. Rand- Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy. Yeah, uh, he's a big, big Second Amendment guy. Randy Couture is obviously in there too. Oh, uh, uh, Randy, Randy in there? Yeah, uh, Randy's in there. Is he in part of that that uh, ring scene where they're? Where they're doing the MMA fighting? Is he part of that? Yeah, well, Brandon's part of that too. Uh, he, there's a there's a few fighters, um, but yeah, yeah, he's a nerd. Yeah, I there's a fight. lot of big names in this in this movie that you're like, you know, this is just because it didn't get a lot of playtime at the theaters. I know there was a few theaters that had like special showings where big group of two A guys and you know people who are Matt Best fans got together and went and and watched it, but. It's like one of those cult movies that you're like, oh, this is hilarious. Because there's zombies and all kinds of stuff in it. You know I love zombies. I love zombies, too. Zombies are fun. Z- <laughs> Danny Trejo <laughs> plays Zombie Trejo. That's how he's credited. <laughs> That's hilarious. But I was shocked to see uh, William Shatner in there. I just I love Captain Kirk, man. William Shatner's the best. Yeah, he was great. He's going stern all the time. He's a fun guy. All right, so we've got a suggestion from a leadhead here on how we go into our uh, our interviews that we cut into, and you know we were we did get a suggestion where it says let's send that lead down range, but in honor of the gunny George B O C A N E G R A, and I I never get his name right. It's J O R G E George. You know who you are. And uh, we appreciate all your suggestions uh, and participation in the show. So what he says, it says, My condolences to all who loved and respected the Gunny early army. As a tribute to the Gunny, the rest of the year, or when you decide to change it, when you play an interview, instead of saying, let's send that lead down range, would you consider replacing it by playing the Gunny 
uh, by playing something the gunny said in Full Metal Jacket. It takes place right after the Rifleman Prayer. And I think you guys are going to remember this. He says, hit it, sweetheart. And the night guardsman replies, aye, aye, sir. And I, I think that would be fitting tribute to a man who loved his beloved corps. Ura Super Fi, most respectively, George B. So, yeah, I think I'll do that. I mean, I'll probably be stepping on all kinds of copyright laws and stuff like that, but I, th- I think I do that consistently on the show anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you go to, you get to cease and desist. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah, so um, Gunny, take it away, and Mike and I will be right back. Oh, hey! Eddie, good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart. Sorry, I, sir. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> right. All right, let me get your levels. Here you, Brian. All right, what do you think? Am I <clears throat> good, close? Do I need to come in like this, talk deep? No, you're doing good. Just talk normal. All right. Yeah, <clears throat> normal voice. Diego? Testing, testing. Swordfish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. This You're good. Steven speaking. You're good, baby. You're good. And then CJ can jump on over here when he gets here. So. I got to sit next to CJ. Well, I mean, you could move him <laughs> over here if you want to. <laughs> Diego, <laughs> it's up to you. Diego, can we switch? Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm all set up over here. All right, all right. You're ready. Everything. All right, Leadheads, we are back, and we are at the 2018 Spring Big Three East. And uh, we're having a blast out here this week. This is day three. And uh, joining us for the first interview of the day, we've got a, a couple of young strapping men here going to talk about some awesome products. To my left, I've got Brian. Brian, what's your last name? Alfred. Brian Al- Alfred. Alfred. A-L-F, like Alan and Ford, like the truck. Al Ford. <laughs> Al Ford. <Okay. laughs> got Brian Alfred with Savvy Sniper. Yep. And we're going to talk about his products coming up. Uh, and then we've got our good buddy and uh, no stranger to the show, Diego. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. That's right. With Gizazi, Giz, Giselle. Something Ga- like that. Oh, Gizli. Gizli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Giesel, too. There's, 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 there's many Giesel. variations to it, and we've heard them all all the time. And, and it never gets less funny. Right? <laughs> so what's what's the... Where's that name come from? What's the history behind so, that name? So, Geisley, as far as I know, is a German name. Okay. And Bill's family comes from German. I guess that's where the precision and engineering, it's like built into the DNA. Right. So, that's that's where Bill's name comes from. Okay. All right. So, uh, we just we had you on at SHOT Show. Yes, and, that's right. Uh, we're, we're talking about some, some good stuff. Uh, but you've got even more exciting news that you're hitting us with from Geisley. Something that I don't think our listeners would ever anticipated this coming. That is I know I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So Bill decided to start a knife company called Abraham and Moses Survival Equipment. Abraham and Moses. Yeah. So it turns out. That's, awesome. uh, That's biblical. That's awesome. It, it is. Abraham and Moses are actually Bill's kids. He's got two sons and two daughters. Okay. And Bill's son, his oldest son, that. Abraham, came to Bill one day. And he's like, Dad, you know, let, let's build an, a knife. Yeah. And then Bill says, you know what, son? Let's just make a knife company. <laughs> it's just too old. If we're going to do yeah, it, let's it, it, do you it know, right. That's, that's Bill style. He's like, yeah, if, if you, you, you're you not going to do it halfway. If you're going to do it, he's going to go all the way. Right. And uh, he's built a, you know, a full knife company from the ground up. And we've got some pretty exciting uh, things going on right now. This, these knives are going to go live on our on our on the website pretty soon. I want to say within a month or a couple okay. of weeks. Is it going to go on Geisley's website or does Abraham and so Abraham and Moses, Moses. Travel, travel equipment is a sister company to Geisley, but it is its own thing. Kind of like ALG, it, exactly. Kind of like like ALG as well, and that's going to be Avonmo.com. So uh, is he looking to adopt any kids or anything like that? Because it seems like all, all you know all his family members, he's just starting a company for him. You know, I've, <laughs> I'm I've seeing a pattern him, here. I've asked him myself, and uh, you know, I'm just teasing. I'm just, to, I think it's awesome. I think it's and I think it's great that uh, you guys are getting into the knives, but. So we were walking down the line the other day, and what you know when you usually see knives, you're just like, oh, there's another knife, you know, kind of thing. But you had this knife that was, and we, that's what draw drew me over there. It was bent. Yes, it was almost ninety degree. You know, it, it, it actually was it, bent ninety degrees. It was ninety. De- yeah, it was a little bit more than that. But the amazing thing about it is, it was it was bent. It wasn't broken. But usually, usually <laughs> it didn't snap. Usually, when you bend the knife, it will shatter. 
And uh, we've broken quite a few knives, none of which are Abraham and Moses because they, they'll bend. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty dangerous when it happens. So it was very important to have right. a knife. But it took some with. tremendous force to to bend, you know, that knife. Yes, anyway, you, you're so. not gonna bend this thing with your hand. No, you, you need a special tool. You, you need yeah. you need a vise and a cheater bar. What kind of metal are these? So well, made out of? there is uh, there's four different knives, and uh, I'm gonna take you through the lineup. Of course, I, okay. I, I, I you happen them. to have the knives here. I have yeah. all the knives here, so it's perfect for a radio show. We're gonna do a show and tell. Yeah, we're good. So your <laughs> your audience so can just imagine. For it. you listeners at home, go ahead and go to the website right. Abraham and Moses a- a- Abenmo dot com. Abenmo, uh, even better, Abenmo. I like awesome. that. A- Abenmo dot com, and then you'll be able to see what we're talking about here. So. Yeah, walk so, us through it, Diego. So I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to start with the AM line of of knives. So I'm just going to hand them to you, and I'll talk about okay. them. So you can, you know, I'll, I'll... We'll start with the biggest first. So this is the biggest one. This guy is called the AM-1. This was designed AM-1. for general, you know, hunting, survival, bushcraft use for, mm-hmm. you know, camping. It's, as, as you can tell, it's beefy. This is a very hardworking knife. Yeah, full uh, tang. Full, full tang. All of our knives are full tang. Uh, that they all have uh, G10 handles. Mm-hmm. And this one in particular is a 3D machined, just so it has that contour, just so it sits very comfortable. Right, in, yeah, in it's the got the nice little curve there that fits right into the, the fingers. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's You'll nice. notice the, the blade shape, it's got that belly to it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's perfect for chopping wood, skinning game, whatever it is you want it to do, uh, this knife is Yeah, up this for is it. The, the ideal outdoor hunting. Um, survival yes yes it's multi-purpose knife you know bushcraft camping you know you can you can chop a log with it yeah you, you can know, gut a deer with this thing no problem absolutely you, know. you could it's, it's the just, curvature of the blade is perfect for that it, it just for your audience the um the the whole knife is 9.5 inches and okay. and the blade itself is 4.6 inches it's made out of d2 steel D2, and, okay. and you, you you'll notice that all of these white, all of these knives have our uh, nano weapon coating on them. Which is, this is another company that Bill Geisley is starting on its side. And this is um, honestly, I'm just not smart enough to explain what this is. It's it's almost like magic. It's a very durable finish. Uh, it looks beautiful. Yeah, and uh, all of these knives are um, are almost looks in like that. a a black nitride. On an AR, kind of. Yeah, and you know, well, in, in, in build style, everything art. about these knives is made in house, like even down to the screws. So it's not, we're not farming this out. This, you know, comes in big pieces of metal mm-hmm. into the shop, and then we do everything in house. Very nice. And I think it would be coming from a deer hunter standpoint, a nice skin and knife because yeah. you look for the curve in the blade. Mm-hmm. To really pull down as you're as you're caping, yeah. and I think that would be. I mean, you'll be able to do it all with this knife. Crack bones. I mean, this is yeah. Split the pelvis. It's, I don't it's think you're doing razor it. sharp too. Oh yeah, yeah. When when we were developing these knives, I I, I asked for one, and I'm like, let me have one, and I'm just gonna abuse the ever living. It's not. It's out. It's not. <laughs> out of thank you. Yeah. It's not. And uh, I mean, I've had this thing, and I've just I've chopped wood, I've cut rocks in half. I'm just absolutely just beating it up and it still lives up to the challenge you know you you may have to resharpen it here and there obviously mm-hmm. especially if you're just sitting there banging on rocks but this thing is just very very durable it's very well built uh this knife also comes uh the the one that we're handling right now has a tan finish on the g10 handles mm-hmm. and it's also going to come in orange od green and black okay um, so you got s- color choices that's right yes and they also come with this very nice yeah the uh, leather casing duty. yeah yeah so who's, are you guys doing these yourselves as well, or are you having these outsourced? Uh, we have somebody who specializes in these things. I'm not sh- really sure if I can tell you oh, that's who okay. is making them. But I, yeah. but I see I, a stamp on here. I can't really read the back of it. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that, that's a Abraham Amos Survival Equipment. That is our okay. logo. Nice. Yeah, these quality are quality leather. I got a buddy that sews saddles and stuff, and I could tell from the stitching, I mean, and the thickness of that sheath, yeah. it's quality. These things are meant for duty. And we all, we're also going to have a Kydex option for every single one of these knives coming oh, soon okay. as well. Awesome. So um, the, uh, the MSRP on this knife, on the I AM like the leather, one, though. Is, uh, it's quality. It's, it's 269 for the knife, and it's 299 for the knife with the leather sheath. And, uh, and, and I want to say, as we talk about these knives, the entire philosophy of Abraham and Moses is to try to bring to market... Uh, custom knife quality and performance at a, at a price point that that's a little bit lower than mm-hmm. what you usually you know it, it's i mean like these a, are you can just tell knives. a super high quality like you were saying with the stitching on the the leather uh sheath here yeah 
Very nice. I like these, man. These are awesome. Yeah, so and you is, said it was two ninety nine on this one? So it's two ninety nine with the leather sheath. Oh wow, I was expecting like four hundred. And it's two sixty nine if you just want the knife by itself. Okay. And then moving on, nice. I have the AM two here. Uh, this is I, I love this knife. It's just this is like your mid size knife here. Yeah, so this is a mid size knife. Uh, just for your listeners out there, it's eight point five inches overall and three point six inches on the blade. This is meant for all purpose use. Uh, it's perfect for law enforcement, you know, tactical use, EDC. Uh, it, you can easily mount it on your chest rig or your belt, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's just the right. It's not something that's cumbersome that you know, you, you're gonna move over and it's, it's gonna like poke you in, on the ribs. Uh-huh. Uh, it's it's just right, and again, very high performing. G10 uh, handles available in green, black, and tan. Uh, it's full tang like all of our knives. Even even the screws are made in house. I don't know if I mentioned that. No, you didn't. Okay. And um, yeah, it's it's just a great uh, wow. solution. For law enforcement, when when you need a little more than than like a folding knife or right, a little, something a little more like compact. That. Yeah, that's a nice. Check N- that out. Nice weight distribution to it, and that's the. This is called the AM2. The AM2, and uh, this guy is gonna MSRP for two twenty nine for the knife and okay. two fifty nine for the nine knife with the leather sheath. Gotcha. And again, it's the, the same high quality. Yes, it's this, the same high quality. The, bu- the buck, the buttons on here too. I mean, you can tell those are good quality buttons. It's got the logo on there. Yeah, I was going to ask: is uh, is is Bill? Is it Bill Geisley? Mm-hmm. Is he a mason? N- Bill Geisley is a lot of things. So that it looks it, like it, a it wouldn't Masonic surprise me. Symbol it's, right there. Oh, we did with the A and the M. You know, I actually think it looks that, like the. That, uh, Right, it it does, right? Yeah. But I don't think I don't think that is the the, the point of it. The okay. logo, if I'm not mistaken, actually one of the engineers came up with it, and it's supposed to symbolize a mountain, like the outdoors. Yeah, the uh, apex. Yeah, that's cool. Very nice. Yeah, and then um, you know, for the AM line of knives, we have the AM3. This is actually my favorite one. I love this little knife. This thing is little. Um, it's got it's got that sharp point, so you can do you know all all kinds of work with it. Yeah. Um, this is perfect for, perfect for EDC. Um, you know, everyday carry, fishing, day hiking. You know, it's great to put yeah. it in your bug out bag. You could you could skin with this one too. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, for your listeners, this knife is six point five inches overall and two point seventy five inches on that D two steel blade. Okay. Uh, yeah. well, again, all fits our knives, right in the palm of your hand. Yeah, all, all our knives are, are are full tang. And what I like about this is that you're not gonna scare people when you pull out this this knife like you're, you're able to do all kinds of work with it but you know I, I, I carry a knife daily mm-hmm. and sometimes you know you use you're opening a box you're doing whatever you pull out the knife and like people jump back they're like oh my god why, why do you need a knife <laughs> and it's like this is why I need it I'm actually using it right now I yeah. use the knife every day same so, reason is, why do you need a gun <laughs> yeah so, my answer always is well I can't use my pistol to open this box you want me to shoot it apart and then they go <laughs> 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 so I that's got a, a knife. good answer yeah <laughs> Yeah, so you know, joking, jokingly, I like to say you're not gonna scare the snowflakes with this knife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's perfect for you know. I don't think they'll tell them you're opening your mail. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's exactly. my letter opener. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll they'll let you on an airplane with it, but it's um, it's just perfect. Yeah, I wouldn't it's, think so. No, you're yeah. not gonna get on an airplane with that. Again, so. it comes with the little sheet. Tell me that's not just adorable. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just cute. Oh, it's cute as a button one. there. Diego. Yeah, the AM3. The AM3. The AM3 is going to retail for one eighty nine and two nineteen for the leather sheath. Available. Uh, the G10 handles will come in green, black, and tan. And okay. there's also a different coarseness to the grip. If you like, a, if you like a little rougher grip or, or a, a, a finer. Can you grip do that grip. on all the knives, or is that just for the option on the AM3? You know, um, I think we're exploring the possibilities, but for now, I think because we're just on that at the uh, AM3. On the outdoor knife, the AM1, I would like to I would like to have a little more texture on there for to be an outdoor. Sure. You know. Yeah, I think I mean that's definitely survival a hunting knife. Yeah. Again, we we have all the machines, you know, high quality German machines. Sure. And uh, we do everything in house, so I, I don't think maybe we'll just make a special one just for you. Just for just for yeah, me. Just for, <laughs> just for lefty, huh? Just for lefty. Well, we'll laser. So that way, I don't have to uh, I don't have to get my soldering iron out and stipple it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like I do my Glock grips. Well, that's cool, man. That is awesome. So, but you've got another one. Yes. Yeah, so this this is, is the bad boy I've been waiting for. This right here. is the flagship. This is knife the big boy right A&M. here. This is called the Lou Goodman Special Operations Combat Knife. Lou so Goodman th- Special this, Operations. This knife was designing in collaboration with Lou Goodman, who is a retired Special Forces guy. Uh-huh. He's been. These are so sharp chests. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Lou Goodman is not only a, a, a master knife maker. 
Uh, he's uh, retired uh, wow, U.S. Army Special beautiful. Operations. So he, he's been there. He's done that. And he wanted to, um, to design the perfect combat knife. Um, so, again, we talked about the bent knife a little bit earlier before. And um, so this knife is made out of Carpenter PD-1 steel. It's a uh, triple tempered differentially heat treated which means that the edge and the body have different heat treatment to it so that means that the edge is 61 rockwell while the body is around 35 rockwell so okay. that means the edge is a lot harder than than the the body so the edge retention on this knife is absolutely insane uh we did a test with it where you know it's it's called the the cutting chore test where in order for a knife to be uh, considered high endurance Oh, it, it will slice right you through that. Slice yes. my Gatorade bottle? It will, absolutely. <laughs> so we, we, we did a test, which, is, which earns the knife the title of high endurance, which we did, uh, we cut, you know, a, a knife straight off the, the factory floor, not, not uh, you know, sharpened especially in any way. And this thing was able to cut uh, 50 pieces of cardboard, 50 pieces of braided hemp rope, 50 pieces of heavy-duty plastic, like a five-gallon bucket, uh, 50 pieces of thick leather, <laughs> Uh, 50 pieces of a rubber pad. Then we chopped it two by four and a half. And even after all that, the knife will will shave the uh, the arms in your hand. Oh hair. wow! And we, we actually have this filmed. It's all one take, no you cuts. Get it on video. Yeah, absolutely. And then to to finalize it, we put it on a on a on a vise and with a long cheater bark and enough torque, we're able to bend it. So this is the bend knife like that. that everybody has been talking about. Now the reason why this knife bends is because of the material and the and the heat treatment, and the the purpose behind that is. You know, when when you're out there, you're doing a, a combat operation, or I personally wouldn't know, but this is just what I've been told. Um, you you can sometimes have a knife and a crowbar and every single tool that you need. So this is more than a knife; it's a tool, and it's a prying tool. So you can apply immense amount of force to this knife. Um, you know, if you need to do a, a military style vehicle search, or you need to open, you know, you're looking for intel, you're opening a file cabinet. You know that you can stick this knife in there and pry something open and it's just not going to shatter on you and, and cut you up and hurt you. Right. Um, you know, you could do all kinds of, you know, interesting things like you know, if you need to escape a war, you can stab it into a wall and use it to step on it and, you know, it will, it will, <laughs> it will hold your, your weight without a problem. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of the features of, of this knife at the, um, at the bottom, it has, it has a little bit of extra material, which is, <laughs> <I> do <that. laughs> can you get, a, get a picture of it bending like, so please. it, you know, do this, yeah. you, like you're bending it. <laughs> that is gonna be for a Bill's gonna be a fun picture. Who let Savvy on? <laughs> what the hell? I'm freaking trying to. I'm, I'm trying, trying to sell to, knives I'm trying here. Trying to stab myself and this thing just bent like. It's a safety knife. What are you knife. trying to sell me here? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know it's better than. If you turn your mic on, you might be able to chime <clears throat> in with us there, CJ. But We've all had it now. There you go. One of the things that that Diego really hit on is CJ Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Chris. late to the party. Chris. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> when it, Diego was uh, was hitting on something that's really important that a lot of people don't understand is most knives that you get and everything. The first thing you're going to do is pop the tip off of them when you're using them for something. This is a multi-purpose knife. I mean, he's got pictures of it right here, and you really need to go check out the video of where this thing is bent. It looks like it was designed to stab people around the corner. I mean, it, it's a great design on it. And as far as you know, for people that have read my book and know a little bit about me, I. I, you know, I had a, I had a decent knife, uh, saved my life in Iraq because of how it was designed. But this knife is, is really made, is really made well. Um, it's really durable. It does exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And, you know, I'm really excited that the guys, guys from Geisley came up with this. And if you guys have never met Diego, uh, he looks just like the guy on the, uh, Dos Equis commercials, the most, most amazing, interesting guy yeah, in the world. Most inter- Stay interesting guy in the world. Friends. <laughs> Stay <laughs> frosty friends. You need Did to you talk about the sheath? Yeah, so we're we're gonna get into this right right now. This knife is that all you want to say about the knife? I mean, it's it, it does everything. Yeah, it, anything it, you want it to do, it, it does it's everything. Gonna do it. It's it gonna has, hold up to the. It the has torture. a nice a nice hilt to it, so you can really put some stabbing force into it. It has a long recast on it, so you can choke up on the blade. You know, use use it for final work. Yeah, but so this knife does come with a leather sheath. Um, and there's going to be a Kydex option available. I'm going to carve my name in the table here. Go for it. <laughs> but then for, um, you know, for those doing serious work, this knife comes with something that we've developed that we're calling the sheath of the future. So this is... It's, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you describe it a little better, and I'll just give you some text. Okay, so it's, on it. it's heavy duty. It's, um, it feels metal, but... It's 70, 75, 6 aluminum. It, it's all metal sheath. 
Um, it's got the straps on there, so you can strap it on your pack, strap it on your leg, uh, it, put it around your belt. It comes with all different strapping options. Um, uh, you can just vertical or horizontal. Yeah, um, <coughs> both options there. So you <coughs> throw it on some Molly. Right. Yep. Molly, the Molly option on, on your belt, whatever it is. But you can use this sheath as a freaking defense weapon in and of itself. You, you could do that too. Yes. You know? It's, um, it's this got one, some some heft to it. This one is set up with a with a locking option, so and the the knife will fit in both ways. So that's what the you. the indentation on the rear of the blade is, just for the the locking mechanism. Is that what that is? Yes. Well, it's got that little whatever you call it. That this right here. This right here. Yeah. That, yeah the that's indentation. What, that's, yeah. that's what locks it in place. So now you can actually set up this sheath so that it will lock into place. Yeah. And you can also swap that button out. And uh, it'll be a friction lock, which you can also adjust just how much friction, how much tension, you know, how much tension you want on it okay. as well. When you when you draw it, yeah, yeah. Nice. And the uh, the sheath is a hard coat type three anodized, so you know it's not gonna scratch up and it's gonna be very durable. So if you want to go least less least le- least lethal, just less lethal, lethal, less. lethal, lethal, lethal less. less. <laughs> yeah, you put it in the sheath, lock it in, and then you can just bang somebody over the head with That's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's like it's a nice little club then. Yeah, multi-purpose, whatever you, you multi-purpose. want. Multi-purpose. Whatever you need it to it. do, this knife will do it for you. So this knife is going to come to market. Uh, the knife itself is going to be three ninety five. dollars Okay. Uh, again, there's going to wow, be... Wow, that's a, not bad a, at a all. ...leather and kydex option. Actually, you know, it's not bad, and I'm personally... I would have seen this would have been a $600 knife right here. Yeah, and with the uh, with the performance and the features of it, it I, with I the think quality, it really I mean, is a great. And value. with that sheath too. Well, you know? with the sheath, uh, the price is going to be seven fifty. Okay, well there you the go. Sheath. Yeah, so you know the the sheath here. I'm going to hand you this big block of aluminum right okay. here. Okay. So the sheath is machined out of a single block of aluminum. Gotcha. Right there. So you know we're making a lot of chips at the shop. Very nice. I like that. And what was this? The the. The knife by itself is three ninety five. No, the name. Oh, this is the Lou Goodman Special Combat Operations Combat Knife. Okay. I said combat twice, but you, you get the gist of it. Well, it's kind of like I was trying to say less lethal. So. Yeah. And su- <laughs> su- <laughs> little, 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 little. Suggestion, I would go with, like, a much smaller name. Yeah, yeah we, we just call Maybe it the Goodman. The Goodman. The Goodman for short. There you go. Abraham and Moses, the Goodman. I like it. I like it. I got to have one of those. I need one of those in my life, Diego. You know, we'll see. Uh, or five or six. But we'll those see are what, awesome. what we can do. Now, do we have different colors on the handles on this one? Um, we're exploring the possibilities of making, you know, a green one or, mm-hmm. or a black one or whatever. But for now, uh, we're only offering it in, in 10 or our DDC version, which okay. is what you're looking at right here. Gotcha. I guess you could always uh, hydro dip it if you wanted a different color. <laughs> Laugh, CJ. Sweet. It's the last day of your Big Three East event, buddy. I'm laughing inside. It's a big success. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing. We had inside. we had great weather this week. The weather was. It's been wonderful. Amazing, yeah. It's been really good. Today is another amazing day. It's like winter. I'm wearing a hoodie. This is ridiculous. But it's cold. Yeah, it's cold as balls. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we're in a deep freeze. You know, we're it's, we're coming from from PA, where you know we're getting a, a lot of snow there. And usually, when I come down here to Florida, it's always so hot and humid. And I was just not even gonna pack pants or a jacket. So, and uh, you know, I'm 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 a shorts kind of guy when it gets hot. Yeah. And I don't think I busted out any of the shorts. Uh, I'm rocking shorts today, jacket. just just you to know, be stubborn. I did. So you so you. There you're you go. like uh, you're like Brian. Brian. You're like Brian from Savvy Sniper. You don't wear adult pants, not in the summer. No, or little no. boy trousers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> adult pants don't fit over and my. You probably and you probably wear shower shoes all the time too. No, no, I don't. I I, I do wear you know sneakers or uh, boots or or whatever or just go barefoot. You know, Diego I'll, sneaky. I'll, I'll get sneaky me one right? of these um, AM hunting knives and just go barefoot into the forest. Yeah. And, you know. Just so um, the AM. Uh, you got social medias. You got yeah, Facebook. So it's um, Avon Mo on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, Avon Mo. A- Abraham and Moses Arrival Equipment on Facebook. Avonmo.com. Very um, cool. It's it's out there. Very cool. So there you go, guys. Uh, another line of awesome products. Stemming from Geisley. All right, guys. So we are back at the 2018 Shot Show, and we are at the lead quarters. You guys realize you're at the lead quarters, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. The lead quarters at the Caltech booth. Caltech booth is the official lead quarters of the Talking Lead podcast for the 2018 Shot Show. In case you didn't know, I just wanted to remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is certainly good to be here again on your show. Yeah. Uh, so Diego is uh, Gosley Triggers or Gosley Automatics. Yes, Gosley Automatics. You, got, you guys like that because you do more than just triggers. That's right. That's yes, right. you do. Yes, you do. 
Um, Diego, Diego joined us uh, four episodes ago, I believe it was. Yeah, it was a big three before the big he got shut down due to weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I got to tell you, the AK trigger, I've, I've put it in my AK, and wow. Is that, nice. is that working out well for yeah, you? Yeah, nice. it's amazing, man. I love it. That, that AK trigger is from our sister company, ALG Defense. The ALG, uh, yes. Yeah, same engineer, same machine, same quality. Uh, just different platforms. There you go. And this time I brought with me Mr. Dan over here. He is a heavy cavalry. He actually knows. Is it Leduc? Leduc it is, yeah. Le, not, not Leduc A. It's Leduc. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he is a wealth of technical knowledge about all uh, firearms applications and platforms. And, awesome. And you may have to cut him off because once he gets started rolling, he, he, just, yeah. he just drops knowledge left and right. Well, I mean, the only reason we would do that is because, I mean, you just got that, that sexy, you know, European... <laughs> voice, you know, the accent. You know. Oh, well, thank you for that, Martin. All the, all the <laughs> ladies love it. Drop your panties. Shoot. <laughs> I don't I think mine just fell off. Look out. <laughs> so when Dan's done talking, you just got leduked. You got yeah, leduked. <laughs> good enough, man. Good enough. I got a pound you on that one. That was good. Boom. All right, so what's what's new with Gosley, guys? Awkward. Well, there is a lot of things Awkward. that are bringing the crowds to our booth. Uh, primarily, that would be the URGI upper which is something that we're going to start selling pretty soon. We're going to start yeah. assembling. Uh, Dan, you want to jump in on here? Yeah, sure. The, the upper? Right? Okay. So the upper, and, you know, it's the first time, guys, we sold an upper, right? So basically what Usasoc did is instead of, uh, you know, are you familiar with the SOT mod block programs of the past? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So basically what they did this time is they upgraded the entire upper receiver. So, they, so they're actually calling it the URGI, Upper Receiver Group Improved. And we're really happy to say that guys who has a huge chunk in that, our Mark 16 rail as well as our airborne charging yeah. handle. So anyway, what we're going to do is, uh, this isn't going to be a clone. It's not going to be an exact clone, but it's just going to be a super high quality, you know, upper receiver with with a lot of the same parts, right? Okay. Yeah. So taking it from the top, we'll have the uh, Surefire SF3P. Uh, if you don't oh, mind, did you I'm, bring it? Yeah, yeah. we have it. Oh, yeah. man, I love props. I Thank you, Diego. You knew right that, though, camera, right? Right here. So, Dan, if you want to start, I believe you were starting from the yeah, top. Yeah, no problem. So, that's the uh, that's a Surefire SF3P uh, muzzle device. And, uh, you know, you can mount your Surefire can on there. Those things okay. are great. Um, it's a 14-and-a-half-inch Daniel Defense barrel, 1-7. Uh, everybody knows Marty Daniel makes great CHFs, and that's mm -hmm. no exception. Um, we will pin and weld it for you. Okay. and uh, move back to our gas block, nitride super gas block. We're going to pin that for you as well. Nice. So then you see that pretty desert dirt color, uh, you know, Mark 16 rail there. We're real proud of it. And now, what are you calling that color? Everybody's that got a different name. Desert dirt. Desert, desert dirt. Color. Desert dirt. Yeah. I like it. That's DDC awesome. Yeah. I like it. short. Yeah. DD? DDC. DDC. Yep. Nicely DDC. Call. Yep. Okay. Like yep. it. Like it. Yep, and then so you know you've got a mil spec upper receiver there and a mil spec BCG uh, high quality uh, Carpenter C one fifty eight bolt, and then that's our airborne charging handle back there. It's uh, Ambi, and uh, just like the rail, you'll notice oh, it. Nice. It actually has the uh, the actual use of sock markings on it. It's not like any of our civilian stuff. So, yeah. really, what we're getting out there to our customers is the uh, the real deal stuff. So the Ambi, I love the uh, Ambi charging handle you got there. And that's called the what? That's the airborne charging handle. The airborne charging handle. Yeah. Okay. Very Typ nice. Typical Geisley looking products. Super solid. Very clean. Eye catching. Uh, just, it's, yeah. yeah, it's eye catching, and, and it, everything they make is just high quality stuff. I mean, to say you're making a high quality uh, upper receiver is a little bit redundant because mm. everybody knows something right. from Geisley is going to be it's top notch. Yeah. 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 No, one nice detail over here, which people ask us all the time, and we just want to make sure we clear this up. So if you see the roll mark on this lower, so we're looking at the lower. Okay, this is actually a Geisley lower. Hang on, now my, my we, eyes are down here somewhere on the table. We uh, do make right them. Here. <laughs> uh, but these are for trade shows and marketing purposes and testing. So this is not necessarily indicative of, of a product that is going to come to market. Okay. Uh, it's just people see the guys lower on it. It's like, oh, my God, give me five. Or otherwise, and I'll be like, not, not quite. But, you know, we <laughs> You're not it, there yet. Yes. We're, we're okay. making for, for our own needs. And uh, hopefully someday. I've you know? been waiting for years for so just a Geisley rifle. I just yeah. want to Diego, way to tease Us everybody. Too. Us too. Uh, yeah. Us too, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. Way to bust their bubble there. Yeah. It's so, like, look what you can't have. Yeah, you, usually <laughs> usually what, what I'll tell people is you'll, you'll have one when I have one. Yeah, fair enough. Right? Fair enough. So you got a trigger. I mean, it's got to be one of your triggers. What trigger you got in this? Yeah, man, I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, a lot of our customers, they've wanted this trigger for a couple years now. That is the super speed precision. Okay. Super speed Ooh, precision. I like it. As a speed. What, what, why don't you feel it? Okay. Thank you. So left hand has the, uh, what are you calling this model? Uh, what's that? Your rifle? The upper. The, 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 that is UR, the URGI. Okay, oh, right. the URGI. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm holding this now. Really lightweight. It feels good. 
And I'm going to do the trigger now. Yep. Okay, so hold on. Is it mid charge? I think so. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's the response wait, wait, I get wait. from every every time someone handles one of my ARs. Nice. <laughs> and they that's the first, that's I the mean, look I, on I the did, face. I didn't even yeah. breathe then and it reset and shot. There's a reset. Bang. Wow. Yep. So the SSP yep. trigger is a super speed precision. It is our single stage trigger. Yep. Uh, very clean break. What's the poundage on that, Dan? So I believe it's going to ship with the similar to the super dynamic three gun with a three and a half pound spring and a four and a half pound spring. You just felt three and a half there. That was three and a half. Yep. Okay. I was going to say that had to been the at least that three is, and a half. That's a, a three gun hose and machine right there. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Very nice. Right so in my alley. We, we did announce the SSP last year. We have been working on it. We have been perfecting it. Super you know, speed. It, yes. su super speed. Yep. Yes. People have been very, very excited for it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're almost there. It's yep. coming once it's uh, perfect, absolutely perfect, and worthy of the Geisley name. We will put it out, and people will be I like that. It. Worthy of the Geisley name. That's that's That says everything about Geisley right there. Yes, sir. That is the company. Yes, can, you, can you pop the top on that and let us see the inside of the, yeah. the trigger? Yeah. No, for, for our live crew, sorry, sorry, leadheads that are listening at home. What's under the uh, hood? You can go to their website, guysley.com. Yeah, you're, that, you're, that's your website, not Geisley Automatics, just guysley.com. It's guysley.com. And it's G E I S S E L E, and you can see what we're talking about. I got a question. Uh, now, for, for now, the URGI upper, it is available exclusively at brownells.com. Uh, I don't know what the time frame on that is, maybe a couple more weeks, and you can pre order right there. Got a good light there. No, not at all. The light sucks. <laughs> no. The outside of the Where's gun looks good. You great. got a kill tech flashlight? Get a, not on me. That's all right. Oh, wait. Here we go. Go to the. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> somebody starts calling me. <laughs> there we go. So there's the nice. super speed, the Gosley super speed. Competition? Precision. Precision. Yep. Thank you. You got it. Coming soon. Not available yet. Next couple months, you should see it out there for sale. When I get one, you guys can have and, one. <laughs> hey, let's talk about this little jewel right here, too. Uh, yeah, that is a maritime ball catch. Oh, yeah. uh, you'll notice very aggressive texturing on it, which is great. When that's you're available gloves. now. That, that, is, yeah. that is available now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe MSRP is 29 Yep, you're right, yep. Diggs. $29. Awesome. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you, you do have the aggressive uh, check rein on there, which, you know, in case your hands are wet or dirty or you're wearing gloves or, you know, it just gives you more tactile. Oh, yeah, just the gross no, motor skills, too. It. And exactly. Yeah, that yeah. is perfect perfect for the left-handed shooter as well because ah, you can yeah, reach yeah. right over with your index finger you don't have That's to right. move your hand yeah. Yeah, um, so and it's made bulletproof like any other guys in the product i tell you that's the first time i've tried that charging handle and it's awesome yep yeah. do it again so, so that one uh chad what we did there was uh 75th ranger regiment they they loved our super charging handle but they said listen man we need something a little more compact we, you know we want something that's yeah. really easy to jump with and that's what we came up with you know on and what i noticed on that too is a lot of the ambi uh, charging handles, you know, you hit on one side and it'll, it'll, you know, you kind of get more pressure on one side than it. I didn't notice that with that at all. It seemed yeah. like it was a very even pull. Super precision. <laughs> it's like, dude, it says it in the name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so what, what else you guys got? I know you got more, more goodies. I got a question before that though. Yeah. Working for Bill. What's that like? Working for Bill is awesome. Yeah. Bill okay. is yeah. uh, a really, really good boss. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, we all work very, very hard at the company, but he uh, he definitely takes very good care of us. Yeah, uh, I, I know we, we, we've put it um, you know, over social media and whatnot, but Bill actually has a cafeteria at the shop. Nice. And uh, every single employee there gets free breakfast Does he and cook? lunch. Does he cook? No. Um, so he's not cooking for you. Only, only, no. only for yeah, maybe uh, he had a I hobby. Imagine, like, like very, very VIP people hook up yeah. over. They, they may get the, the full yeah. bill yeah. treatment. But yeah. for so us, we have a, a, a professional chef. And what do you uh, normally get for breakfast? Uh, well, for breakfast, you have a whole bunch of options. You have breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. You know, uh, what does what does, what does Diego's breakfast consist of? So it, it really got to be something romantic, I'm sure. Yeah, well, you know, it's <laughs> sexy. It, it really depends on how tight my pants are feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, because it, it, you know, you, you've heard of like the freshman 15 when people start college. Yeah, but yeah, at, at yeah. Geisley, we have like the freshman 20. Uh -huh. <laughs> food just go ahead and start at 20. All the time. Yeah. It's like we have breakfast when we come in, and then you know a little bit later you break for snacks, yeah. and then yeah. it's lunchtime, and then there's snacks again, and then uh, in the summer on Friday we have ice cream. And, nice. Uh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah the reason I ask that question is because I, I work for an amazing uh, man, Mr. George Kelgren, and uh, 
judging by my email exchanges with Bill and then my interaction with him at shows or whatever, he seems like a guy I would love to work for. Like somebody oh, that uh, you kind of pour your don't your worry, George. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. He's not leaving. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, somebody you know, you I just imagine his poi- employees love to work for him to impress him to you know to move the ball forward for him he's one of those he's not just a boss he's a leader and he's one of you guys is kind of what i get from his personality so absolutely yeah, and, and yeah. bill is always very accessible as well so it's right not, it's not yes. like those bosses like if you yeah. want to talk to them you gotta make an appointment with the secretary and his door is always open you know yeah. anybody who has an idea you're gonna he's all, you know he, he eats with us in the cafeteria you can always yeah. want yeah, talk to him. I went. I stopped by the booth one time uh, to to pick his brain. It was it was him and one other guy just standing. Like, holy crap! I'm just standing here talking to Bill Geisley. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's like to me, he's kind of a he's one of my heroes. I mean, I, I love all the products. I always have been a Geisley fan for a long time. So that was pretty cool. You know, just to see him, just humble as ever, yep. hanging out yep. in the booth, yep. talking to him. And I guarantee you, most of the people that walked up had no idea who he was. Yep. You know, yep. so he's Bill, that guy. Bill keeps it real. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So That's you'd reached into a little bag. Is this a new product? You're gonna another product yeah, you're gonna you know hit what? us with. So uh, when, since we're talking about the charging handles, uh, you'll notice that um, we, we are having no retail packaging on a lot of our products. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is one of them for the supercharging handle. I gotta and say the trigger packaging looks awesome. Yeah. It looks so yep. good now. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I think I, this is too heavy. We're all tired. I'm just gonna leave this here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. So Thank this, you. Is, this is for you, Marty. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. This is awesome, man. I got I got the perfect gun for that. Okay. All right, there you go. Let yeah. us know right. how you like it. Uh, you know I will. You know. So like I said, the AK trigger uh, is doing great. I got the uh, the Maritime. Right. Yeah. I installed right. that. Yeah. It's working great. I love it too. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna this is gonna go in. That's gonna uh, go in your. AR it's gonna build. go in your guys the upper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We'll throw it in the, the guys' layup. Does it come with a charging handle too? It does. The guys' layup. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I got an extra one, Chad. Oh, there you, go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let because Chad needs one of these in his life. No. Okay, no, no, no. you keep that one. I'll, I'll. You, you need one of these in your life. You I've, keep. I've got one of the, uh, the gold ones there. <laughs> I don't need, I need, I don't need one. I need about 29 of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to switch them all out. So now. Chad, you know, Chad's yeah. a competition shooter. Oh, he, yeah. he needs all the advantage that he can get. So <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> that's, I need they, someone else to shoot my gun for me. Is what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, fair. And I know you, you'll hook me up. So I appreciate yeah. that so much, uh, guys. Uh, again, uh, thank you for coming by. Yeah. Give your website, your social medias, everything. So it's all guysly.com. That is our website where you can order our products. Then we're on Facebook for Guysly Automatics, Instagram Guysly Automatics. Uh, we're having. Um, we do a big, big raffle twice a day here oh, at Chacho, which yeah. brings the crowds. Uh, I mean, we mob the area pretty much. There you and go. we actually give two AR-15s per day. Tell the live crew that again. Yeah, One more. Guys, um, we have live streams twice a day, and, and then we'll, we actually have three three times a day. We're giving away two AR-15s every wow. single day of the show. Uh, wow, we're nice. also Two have, a day. Yes, two a day. And wow. these are actually guys lead lowers. Oh, so if you get man. Lucky, yeah. But you, you know what? For those people watching on the live stream right now, you can actually play from home. If you go on any of our social media, you will find the link to AR15.com. We have a thread going on there, which uh, I think it may be... So you don't have to be present to win. No, no. no. So that, that is going to happen on Friday. Uh, you guys just very, got very quadrupled simple. the amount of interest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the, uh, the AR15.com guys, you know, their IT guys, like, what is up into our server? Why is it Shutting small? down. We're going to crash it here. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah. I love awesome, guys. good. Diego, Dan, the DD, the DD team. <laughs> tell you the DD team. I love it. That's love awesome. It. Thank you guys so much for coming yes, by. Of course, thank you. Thank you of course, thanks for having Anytime. us. Leadheads, we will be back with more from the 2018 Shot Show at the official lead quarters, the Caltech booth. Yeah. All right, guys. So I uh, hope you enjoyed those interviews that we did with Diego. Diego is a super great guy. And again, we really appreciate them stepping up and, and making that donation with the, the Goodman knife that they did. It's like a $750 knife that they donated to the uh, sheepdog auction. And it was part of that $5,000, um, uh, package that we put together for them. So, uh, go and support, uh, Gosley and, uh, the guys over at Abraham and Moses, that new knife company. They're awesome. So, uh, we were talking earlier, NRA coming up, Mike and I, Raphael, the gang, Rob Pincus, we're all going to be at booth 5921? Yep, it's 5921, yep. 5921 yep. Uh, in Dallas, 
Uh, the dates for that, it's coming up next week. It's the 3rd, 4th, 5th, is it, and 6th? Oh, look, see, I gotta look at my calendar. You put me on a hot seat with all these questions. I know, man. I had, I've got like 9,000 pages put. Here it is. So it no, is it's, May 3rd through the 6th. Right. Which technically would be the 4th through the 6th of the show, right? Uh, well, they're saying registration hours, May 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. So yeah, I think it's the 4th, 5th, and 6th is when the actual exhibit hall hours are. Right. Uh, 9 to 6, um, and then Sunday it's 10 to 5 for the exhibit hall. So you guys make sure if you're going to be there, or just go ahead and make plans to be there. Uh, it's Dallas. You can get a, a cheap, quick flight into Dallas from pretty much anywhere. And it's at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. And this is the 147th um, NRA annual meeting. And, I mean, even if you don't, you know, you aren't really in, in sync and agree with everything the NRA is doing right now, this is a great time to come and talk to the, the people that are part of the NRA and talk about how you can get things changed. And you do that by voting. And there was just a, an election for new board members. You know, we had Adam Crowd on the show. We were pushing really hard for Adam to get elected this year, and he just he fell short again. He didn't make it. Uh, but they got a couple of good people uh, elected and on the board. But that's how you do it. Is, you know, is you, you use your power, your membership power to vote and get the people on the board that represent how you want things done. And that's how you get change. So... Uh, and you don't do it by not going. So you go to this meeting, and this is where you're going to see the people and all the the board members the um, and members like yourself and interact with them and, and talk to them about your concerns or things you like. I mean, that's the best thing. Keep it positive. Talk about all the things you do like that's going on, and then you work work your way into the, the changes that you want done. Yeah, but, well, check out the show, period. I come, mean, even not politically uh, inclined into the NRA, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a great place to go and, and see. And this is, unlike SHOT Show, everybody's more relaxed here. Even the the vendors, the companies, you know, they're more relaxed here. They like seeing the people who are actually using their products, not the people that are they're selling it to or distributing it to that distribute it to you guys. So you get actual one-on-one -on -one time with these manufacturers. So as an end user... If you've got tips, suggestions, uh, you want to talk to them about things they're doing well for these these companies like Bursa, like Grand Power, like Metro Arms, you come to the Eagle Arms booth, 5921, and uh, you talk to, to the Mike, to Raphael. Um, who else are you guys going to have in that booth? You're going to have some representatives from these uh, these companies that you import from? Yeah, we'll have uh, somebody uh, always comes up from Bursa. Uh, okay. This guy, Manuel, he'll be there. He's actually from the factory. Um you know, which is good because you can talk to, to a guy that's straight from the factory, not just us. And um, we got a couple other people that are going to be manning the booth. Uh, you know, we're all we're all approachable people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and and talk about some of the the farms that you guys are going to have there on display that people can come up and touch and feel and talk to you about. We'll have every single Barca. Well, basically, we'll have one of every model that we we carry. And, oh, and nice. If, yeah, if anybody's seen our catalog, they they know what that entails. That's a lot of guns. So that's a lot of guns. <laughs> yeah. And you guys actually uh, got a bigger booth this year, right? So you're gonna you have we're a, we got a thirty by thirty island. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we used to have the ten by twenty. You know, but uh, it's thirty by thirty, <laughs> and it's. Um, this would be a perfect place for the lead quarters, man. So it's, it's, it's going to be lots of space for activities. as we mentioned, we're going to be set up there doing the show. So we want you guys as lead heads to come up, even if we're on the air with somebody we're recording. I mean, be courteous. Don't just come in yelling and but but come up to us. You know, come up to the table. Uh, when we get done with the interview, we'll talk. We'll hang out, and we're going to be giving away some stuff too, man. We're going to have some t-shirts. We're going to have. Uh, some trigger safe things. We have some other products from some of our sponsors there giving no away. Guys, the no sweat guys are sending a bunch of no sweat hat liners down. Yeah, no sweat. No sweat. It's going to be there. And then, of course, the big thing is you guys are going to be giving away, Eagle Imports is going to be giving away a couple of firearms too. Yep. We're going to uh, have a couple. We're going to 
basically you're going to enter a drawing. Uh, you got to come by the booth, give us some information. But uh, we're going to give away two guns, and they're going to be well worth it. Sweet, so, sweet. And then, of course, a few episodes back, we had you on, and uh, we were talking about that uh, Strybog. You guys are going to have that there on display too, right? So everybody, we're going to have the Strybog there, which is. I'm uh, not saying that's the gun you're giving away, but that's going to be there for the for them to check out. It's going to be there for them to check out, and that gun's actually going to be hitting the market within the next two weeks. So it's like perfect timing. Nice. Um, yeah, we're going to have all the new products from Grand Power on display there. Uh, obviously, everything from Metro Arms, uh, American Classic, Mac, SPS, uh, Llama, uh, the little Micro Max 380. Uh, there's going to be, a, like I said, we're going to have uh, one of at least everything, and then a couple of models will have a bunch. So there'll be plenty of stuff to go over with, and uh, you know, then go out there and go out right, right out there and buy it. There you go. Yeah, they they can put you in the right direction on where you can go and get one of those. And then, of course, you register to win uh, those two that they're giving away, and you may actually uh, walk away with a nice gun. Yeah, we got a gun for everybody. That's the cool thing about Eagle is uh, we got a gun for the first-time shooter to the competition, you know, badass. Like, yeah, a gun for everybody. Or just the gun collector enthusiast. I mean, you guys got some beautiful 1911s uh, that uh, Llama's producing. Love yeah. those. Metro Arms, man. He makes a great gun. Metro it's Arms, a, yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun uh, a lot of fun guns in that whole line. I mean, y'all have so many. I got to get my guns um, straight here. I'm going to pull it up so I don't mess it up. But um, that one that I've been jonesing over, every show I talk, I was like, hey, when, when am I going to get this one? When when you send me this. The Pantera is one. That's one I've been yeah. wait, waiting on for like two years now. Everybody wants a Pantera. <laughs> Trust me. I, <laughs> you think I have some pull, you know, but uh, I, I don't get the competition shooters get those before I do. Obviously, I understand that. Um, but the the other one, I'm going to pull it up here. Um, and I believe it's a Mac. I believe it's a Metro Arms. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, it was the... Uh... Um, Definitely want one of those 3011s. Yeah, I've been jonesing that's over. 3011. No, that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. The th- yeah, the, we're talking about the shot show. Yeah, the uh, the tactical. I like. I love the tactical one. That's that's the one I want right there. And I like the the Rapido. Um, it's more of the competition style speed gun. Yep. It's a beautiful yep. beautiful gun too. I'd I'd love to add that. And then SPS, I think they've got. That's your Pantera. That's that's where your Pantera is. Yeah, the Pantera, um, the Vista, uh, digging the Vistas as well. But the Pantera, yeah, that's like my my dream gun. That's my bucket list gun right now. It's got to have one. I have next gun is the the SPS Pantera. So we need to make that happen. All right. Well, you know a guy. That's the good news. An old guy uh, knows a guy. Um, but if you guys come to their booth and you can't find that Strybog, it's probably over uh, at the at the lead quarters. So I probably got it and I'm holding it and <laughs> not not wanting to give it up. So if you that's that that's the I think that's the gun that takes Grand Power to the next next level, man. It's crazy the uh, response we've gotten from that thing. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's cool. It's definitely a cool gun. So you guys come by booth fifty nine twenty one. Say hey. Uh, don't just stand there like a knot on a log. Just come up, approach us. Like I said, we're very approachable. Even if we're recording, uh, you never know who's going to be in that booth, man. We get uh, celebrities. We get different manufacturers. Uh, if there's somebody in particular that you're wanting me to interview at NRA, shoot me an email at talkinglet at gmail.com. I've still got time. I could probably uh, uh, get them booked. Um, so, I mean, if there's a particular manufacturer, maybe a particular, uh, person or firearm you want me to, to talk about during NRA, shoot me a, an email, talkinglet at gmail.com and we'll try to make that happen for you. Very cool. So, right. oh, um, I'll what else? I'll be seeing you shortly. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be seeing you next week, man. Uh, I'm flying in on the second. Yep. So am I. I'll be there. Okay. So uh, we'll get together. We'll have a couple of drinks. Um, but you guys go to eagleimportsinc.com and then you've got access to Bursa, American Classic, 
uh, Metro Arms, SPS, Llama, Grand Power, Comanche, and of course, Avidity Arms, which uh, we'll get the, the skinny on it. Last time we talked, you guys were still uh, doing some fine tuning on that. So we'll get an update from you and Rob uh, at NRA and uh, find out what's going on with the uh, the Avidity Arms. And I'm going to get it right. Don't, don't, it's the PD-10. Ha. Yep. It's going to be a good one. I can't wait, man. I can't wait either, man. <laughs> I know. You're like, there's nobody wants it out <laughs> more than you do. <laughs> more than I do. <laughs> Very understandable. But it's me <laughs> that wants it out the most. Yeah. So stay yeah. tuned. We got a lot of good stuff coming from, from NRA. And I'm hoping to get at least before NRA's here, uh, two more shows, maybe three more if I can get them in for you guys to get caught up because, uh, we've not even got into the uh, the Big Three East uh, interviews yet, and I've got a couple of really good ones I want to hit you guys with. Uh, but this Thursday, which will be, what's the date this Thursday? Uh, the 26th, April 26th, I am getting my hair cut. Yay! It's come bleed or blister, my hair's getting cut. I'm donating it. The 26th. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity. I know I told you guys we were going to do it at Sheepdog, but there was just no time. They had such a full venue schedule uh, that we weren't able to, to work that in. So uh, I'm going to the 26th. I'm going to do like a Facebook or Instagram live, and uh, I'm going to video my boy Dale. We're going to put my hair up in pigtails. I look like Coolio, and uh, we're going to cut those off and donate them to Hawks Locks for Kids. And for you lead heads that tune in, I'll have a little special giveaway. I'm going to pick somebody at random who tunes into that uh, after the fact, and uh, I'll get in touch with you and hook you up with a very cool prize from the Talking Lead uh, Lead Swag. So, Are you worried about that changing your personality, like all your strength that you My. derive? <laughs> My. Well, I have no strength anyway, so... <laughs> Maybe I'll get some. I go like this is Marty from the Talking Lab. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my second go round, so this is my first rodeo. Um, <laughs> this one actually took longer, but it is longer. Um, I've been in two years, uh, over two years. I think I've been growing it out since the last time I had it cut and donated. I don't know you any other way, but the way I see you. So then with the the hair, <laughs> yeah. So you may not recognize me. At uh, at NRA, I'll have it. I'll have it high and tight, baby. <laughs> that, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll look weird, but uh, yeah. maybe I'll get a, a wig, you know, <laughs> so so people will recognize me. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, you guys stay tuned for that. That's gonna happen Thursday around. Uh, I believe it's gonna be around three p.m. Uh, Central Time. Three p.m. Central Time is uh, when I've got that appointment in. Uh, I'm gonna gonna give to Hawks Locks for kids. Give give back to the kids. Get some wigs made. Uh, big thanks to all the sponsors of Talking Lead. Uh, right on USA, the official optics of Talking Lead. Check them out. RightOnUSA.com. Uh, Smith and Bradley watches, Defy watches, the official wristwear of Talking Lead. Uh, and take advantage of all those great discounts that are going on with Defy right now, where you can get those uh, watches for forty four percent off using Leadhead discount code. High Threat Concealment, highthreatconcealment.com. X Steel Targets. X Steel Targets.com, 35% off store wide. Everything there. Take advantage of that, guys. Modern Spartan Systems. Check them out, modernspartansystems.com. I uh, had a lead head contact me, said the code wasn't working there. I've been in touch with Marcus. The lead head code should be set up and working now. So try it out. If it's still not working, let me know. Uh, but use the Leadhead discount code at Modern Spark System as well. Uh, VanQuest, check them out at VanQuest.com. Keltec, KeltecWeapons.com. 1776 United, check them out at 1776United.com. Uh, and then, of course, get our uh, mugs, the Talking Lead, which we're, you know, you guys come up with a name for that. I'm going to pick a winner, and you're going you're to get a mug uh, for whatever we decide to name our Talking Lead Tumblers. Which uh, Sedini's in the lead right now with the. I'm gonna get that. What's that? I said I'm gonna get that tumbler. You're gonna get that. Um, and what? Tell him what your name was. 
The Assault Tumbler. The Assault Tumbler. There you go. I love it. I love that. Um, so you guys still submit your suggestions. You, you, you may come up with something better. I don't know. Um, and maybe Michael just donate his tumbler to you guys. I'll, do, I'll donate. Because you, you know you're going to get one anyway. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dip123.com forward slash talking lead and thanks to our buddy Danny over at Dipstick Hydrographics for making these for us I mean it just started off where he just did one for me and sent it as a thank you and I was like dude these things are so awesome we gotta get them out to the lead head brigade so boom there you go check them out dip123.com forward slash talking lead 25 bucks that's it 25 bucks uh, and then, of course, coming up, NRA, the official lead quarters of Talking Lead is going to be Eagle Imports. Thank you, Mike, for doing that. We're so excited. We're going to have a great time. We're going to see a lot of the lead heads. We're going to have some great interviews. We're going to give a lot of shit away, too. I'm looking forward to it, brother. Thank you. Booth Thank you, 5921. 5921. Come by, say hey to us. Eagle Imports, the official lead quarters of the 2018 147th annual National Rock Association annual meeting. That's a mouthful, but we've got a shirt that says all that on it. So we've got a limited edition shirt that we're having made. If you guys come by, we only got a few. It's a limited uh, quantity that we've got. So it's kind of first come, first serve on those t-shirts. Uh, but they're badass. 1776 made those for us, and they're going to look really good. All right, Leadheads, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take advantage of all those deals. Uh, send me an email, talkinglead at gmail.com. If you've got suggestions for jack wagons, uh, people you want to have on the show, uh, NRA coming up. Uh, if you guys want to get in touch with Mike uh, over at Eagle Imports. Uh, the best way to get in touch with me is probably email or Facebook. Either or. I really prefer. But my email address is michael at eagleimports.com. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L at eagleimports.com. And my Facebook, you can find me on there kind of the same way. So There you go. <laughs> guys, um, NRA, if you can make it, make it. We'd love to see you there. And as always, lead heads, keep your loved ones close. And your firearms close. And also use that assault tumbler. That's definitely... definitely. (laughs) Get your talking lead assault tumbler, baby. Your black evil assault tumbler. Keep that close, for sure. Dip123.com forward slash talking lead. We're out, guys. See you in Dallas.